out, out there in the Hamptons, they were having a um, concert with Tom Petty. Uh-huh. How great was Tom Petty, man? Tom Petty oh, was you awesome. Went to see Tom Petty, too? I did, and Sal is in a snit because John Hine was with us at the Tom Petty concert. He's <laughs> Still, out of his fucking... even though you had nothing to do with yeah. it, yeah. him his, being there. His beef was that I invited John Hine to the Tom Petty concert and not him. I explained to him I didn't even know John was going to be there. Right. Gary invited him, and he's still out in the hall bitching about it, and here's the tape to prove it. I'll be the first one to tell you that that night wait, at Lakeland... Wait, 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 wrong tape. Here we go. Gives a shit about Tom Petty. I'm saying the gesture would have been nice, that's all. You know, you make a nice gesture. Everybody works together. You say, hey, you know, we're going over here. Come on out. But instead, you know, he ends up with uh, the golden boy, John Hine. Because it's very, very difficult to say four highlights of the show every day. You know, I, I could see how, you know, John Hine should get the pat on the back for that. Oh, wait, and then they have those music specials. Those are real good, too. Yeah. Wow. Let's see. Let me, let me, let me, let me dig, um, dig into the archives and get 100 sh- songs and shuffle them around six times. Dude, I think you're overly <laughs> simplifying John's job, man. No, John's great. I love John. Wonderful. I mean, he's the creative Jump the Shark. We all remember how great those segments were on K-Rock, right? <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Why didn't you say this on the air? Yes, yeah, seriously. I love John. You guys are just trying to pin me against John. I- by, the way, the, the word is, by the way, the word is pit. pit. Yeah, not yeah. pin. You guys are trying to pin me against John Hine. Yeah, that's the Boy, He uses it a couple of times. Hey, you at all. I, didn't, no, I never questioned not- John's integrity in the workplace here. Come on. His what? Integrity in oh, the workplace. Oh, is that what you call it? <laughs> um, no, I... I love John. I think John does a great job. He, he does a great job hosting the wrap-up show. I, you know, if you're trying to pin me against John, it's not going to happen. I admire what John does. I'm just saying that, you know, if, if Howard invites one person from the second tier, you should invite a couple, of, you know, invite the whole crew. But apparently Howard didn't invite John. Gary did. So I'm actually glad it wasn't Howard. I'm glad it was Gary because I wouldn't be seen 100 feet from that fucking monstrous lip piece of garbage, Gary Delabate. Fuck him, too. Wow. Now get out of my office, both making me sick to my well, stomach. Evidently, Gary and Beat Sal. It. Gary and Sal got in a fight on the wrap-up show. Oh, really? Yeah. This is one big soap opera. This whole channel. Gary and Sal were fighting. I don't know if you heard it before. No, we went I wasn't. Question. This is about to me. Whenever, whenever we do an extended stand-up show, where like we did in Tampa, like. Um, you know, uh, Gary will come down and do a few minutes, Richard, Sal, you know, all of us on the show. It, there's really, really a lot of insane competition mm-hmm. as to who does well on stage. And uh, I think those tensions boil over here. That's what this is about. Yeah. I'll be the first one to tell you that that night in Lakeland was a rough night for everyone. The only person that could walk off that stage with their head held high Richard Christie. was Richard Christie. Absolutely. Everybody else will, will absolutely admit uh, that no, that was a rough Gary, night. Gary, Gary, Sal did good. Richard did great. He did good because he yeah, fell yeah. off the stage. I, Sal almost killed himself. I didn't do good because I fell off the stage. That was the No, you did good fin- because every joke had the N-word in it. No, that and was you were the- in Lakeland. Gary, can I ever get a word out without <laughs> you just fucking totally annihilating me? Why don't you just what, take out a gun and shoot me and get it over with? <laughs> we're I can't it. get a fucking word in without your fucking gargantuan lips just cover- covering my fucking face and just uh, suffocating me. You're boring. Jesus me. Christ. You bore me. I'm boring. Yes. You, a guy who could bring a fucking show to a screeching halt 10 to 15 times a day minimum, you're calling me boring. How come it's how come I can't come in here? How come it's not the wrap-up show with John and, express, and Sal? How come I can't express myself without saying one word without you just because totally it generally, attacking it me? It generally starts with you telling me why I'm wrong. No, I, I didn't see. You're defensive. All these years of getting battered by Howard, you think now all what of a sudden when somebody the, comes up with an opinion. What was the first thing you said to me when you walked in just now? I said, I said, you said Sal was good because he fell off the stage, and I said that was the grand finale. But I did well that night. I held my own. I wasn't booed off the stage. Nobody said you like were. You. Nobody said uh, you were booed okay, off the stage. Okay, and then you mean you're only funny because of the. We N-word. don't know whether you were booed off the stage. Do you I fell do, off an asshole. Do I do, I, do I do N words on my rows? Do I? Five Sal, in the row. I tell you what. Here's just keep attacking me. I'm making you right now against you, dude. Here you go. But no matter what I say, let me talk, and I'll tell you. You are the end all. You are Mister Know It All. Let me tell you something right now. I think all the fucking chocolate has gotten to your fucking brain. I'll put I'll put five hundred dollars on the table. I'll dare you to make an audience laugh, and you can't make any racist or homophobic jokes. I've done that plenty of times. Let's see. First of all, I'm not here to make anybody laugh. I came in and an excellent job you're doing. So then Sal, like Sal, was so angry, he goes back to 
his studio and then records this. Oh, dear. Like, his only consolation is to record Gary Bobby. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea how weird it is. I'm sitting in my office, and you can hear Sal scream, because he has to do each voice, like, layer over another. And I could hear him screaming, you know, singing away. Yeah. That's his, that's his therapy. It's like punching me. It's like hitting a punching bag with my face on it. <laughs> but you know, but here's my point with Sal. Like, who do you? Which guy do you believe? Do you believe the guy who railed against John? He said some vicious things about John Hine there. John, how did you take that? One? Really, really cruel. And th- so, do you believe that guy or the guy who goes, "I love, I John love Hine. John Hine." To me, a great job. I he believe- walked into the office and he said to John, "Just want to let you know they prodded me." But in in the piece, they'll, they'll tell you they didn't prod him at all. And again, I want to point out that John gives Sal a ride home four to five days a week wow. and never asks for a nickel, never gets one. Wow. What? How did you take that? The funny part is when I'm listening to that clip and getting all pissed, he comes over. It's just a bit. It's just, and that's even more insulting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if he really feels that way, then say so, and you know he'll have to walk home. That's all. Will you continue to give him a ride? Yeah, but maybe I'll leave him off in Queens or something like that and make him fly. <laughs> but he said some real, like, he's talking about your segments at K-Rock. That's really Shut going, up, that's going back pretty far, man. I don't know. Listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, like you. Like, you've never said a bad word about anybody. Well, I can't oh, do it, though. Oh, so you're, you're completely, so I did the same thing. You know what? There's something on the show called honesty. If I'm a little angry about something, I express my John, opinion. What was the honesty? No, John, I know John's a good guy. John? We get along, but because I express something, God forbid. But when I'm called a retard and a racist and a pedophile, I can fucking go in the back and keep hey, my mouth shut. I could deal with it, man. Dude, what are but you? But when I say it, look at all of a sudden, all of a sudden, now I'm the hey, backstabbing dude. scumbag. This guy gives you a ride four times I'd a fucking, fucking day. I fucking offer him money and offer him lunch and everything else, too. Stop getting candy coated with this horse shit from that fucking crew back there, Howard. <laughs> What's with the tan, dude? I was in Marco Island with my family this weekend. The wife? Yeah. How'd that go? No action, like anything else. Oh, you, you went away On for a week? On a vacation? Week? Well, I can't afford it. Two rooms, so I got one. The kids were sleeping <laughs> next to me. I tried to slip a finger in one night, and my four-year-old got up with the school bus, banging it over my head, so ah, nothing happened. Jesus. Who called you a pedophile? What are you talking about? You know about? what I'm saying? I'm t- I'm just I'm, I'm just exaggerating. I'm just saying that, oh. hey, uh, in, in the form of this show, the way this show works is that we kind of, we rib each other. Do I really hate John Hine? Of course oh, not. come on, though. You, you tacked everything. You said his segment's bomb. Listen he only, to the way you That's how I get it. under his skin, of course. Well, why are you getting under his skin? Why are you getting under his skin? What did he do wrong? The thing is that... What did he, he do to you? <laughs> why did you he let them... concert. Why, why did you let us pin to you me? against <laughs> He Sal firmly believes that you invited me out to that concert. And, and you're I, I'm, I, well, I'm still the new guy here, so you bypassed everybody else oh. in having me come. I mean, am I right? Sal and I haven't even talked about this. Is, Listen, that, is that accurate? Howard, I said to you... <laughs> All right, get out of here, Sal. If you want to invite this fucking guy, invite him. I, I didn't, didn't get, I'm not him. crying to and you about it. And by the way, it. I will invite him. I don't give and a you fuck should. about any pecking I, order. I think, that, I think that's I a like good idea. I like him better than you. Uh, fine, go ahead. Suck his cock for all I can. I trust the fucking guy. You're crazy. Oh, you don't trust me? No. All right, that's nice. That's I would nice. never trust you in my house. That's ridiculous. You're a really Never. sick, twisted man. I'm not a guy who goes around smelling Mutt's daughter's panties. Uh, see, see, that's all see, right. that's all right. Come you know on. what I could do with that? I'm that's not going right. to cry like a little baby and and put all these little conspiracies together like all you people do. Huh? I have nothing against John Hine. I gave the guy a couple of ribs. So what? I said he comes on the end and says four highlights of the of the day. Is that so fucking difficult? Well, today, Howard, we're going to talk about why was Sal was pissed off at Howard for not going to the Hamptons. We'll speak to Sal and take some calls and figure that well, out. Well, it is difficult, Also, yes. today's show, what was in Artie Lang's P.S.? It's- we'll have Artie on the show. and Wow, that takes so much fucking time. No offense, show, John. And he does a great job. And I know. So what do you want? you guys want for- fighting and everything else. And, and I love the guy. So so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know what? I mean, the guy is not the next Howard Stern. I, you know, big deal. That's just my opinion. I think he does a great job on the show, but it's not like it's not, it's not revolutionizing anything, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You've got a lot of fucking thoughts. Man. No offense, man, but I take 100,000 digs a day on the show. I just let it roll off my back. If I didn't, I would kill myself. So take so, one or two, <laughs> you know, and pick your between. Not- <laughs> 
I mean, what, who cares? We're making a big deal out of it, not John. John is. I like John, but no, all of a sudden now, now I'm, uh, you know, whatever. I'm fully well, back you certainly let your real, You let your real thoughts out, that's for sure. What's my real thoughts? That, that John basically is an overpaid. I never said that. But well, that's what you're saying. You're saying you're worth way more than him. Nope, that never he said that either. Sucks, that he, all he does is listen and pick through uh, best of uh, material, and uh, you basically belittled everything he does here. I don't belittle it. I'm like, I just, I'm saying if you try to plant thoughts in people's minds, I'm saying to you, if you look at the whole, you're undermining what he does dude, and you're saying it's unimportant. When you're a general in the army, you bring the whole troop. That's how I look at it. I didn't bring any troop. All right. You just brought one Sal. soldier. You took Sal. one soldier out Sal. of the ditches. Sal. There was no battle. And you left everybody else in the Sal. storm. That's the how I look at it. No one. Okay. That's what you're saying. What do you mean? Am I lying? No, I'm not, but you Fucking know, asshole. but uh, I'm I'm not saying you're lying. But I'll tell you if I invited John. I'm, I mean, you can. I don't care. I don't I, care. I don't ever give any thought whether you care or not. I don't care if you're hurt by it. All you right. don't think what will Sal think when never. I do this? It never <laughs> enters into my thoughts. What will Sal think? I will invite John. In fact, now because of this, oh. you're invited to everything that I do. <laughs> Thanks. I mean it. You should thank Sal, actually. Thank you. Thank Sal. Don't thank me. <laughs> thanks, Sal. Today, we're going to talk about my next party at the Howard Stern Show. That's we'll right. take some <laughs> calls, right. talk to Sal about how he truly feels about me, and uh, have Gary's stupid opinions to follow. Sal, 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 respect, today Sal would, you respect, wrap -up show. would you respect John Moore if he took Richard's cock to his face? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> That's revolutionary. <laughs> no, the truth is, I, we all get along and stuff. I'm just saying that. I w I'm sorry, John, if you got, uh, was offended by that. I was just a little personally hurt you know you guys are all going out there i Dude, really don't care for tom I petty i probably would it. have said no i had nothing to do oh, with it okay okay I, met, I saw john there i was as surprised as anyone sal he didn't even have anything to do i aggressively wanted to go see tom petty i i made a conscious i said that i might want to do that and then he said to me all right look if you're gonna come out stay by me yeah that's what happened and, and that's somehow fine. gary had a ticket and he decided to ask john hi right and that's fine, and I'm happy for everybody. I have to have really. an event now, so I can invite John to it, not Sal. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm for now because of you, I'm forced to have an event. <laughs> All right, that you're not you, invited to. Sal clearly underestimating your role here. Uh, he can think whatever he wants to think. He's a twisted mind. He entertains me every day. They'll go home. I got to say that, but. Uh, the fact that get the fuck away! Yeah, dude, this is your ride home. Now, 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 um, could you get, what'd you call me? Oh, uh, Sharky the Clown. Sharky the Clown. Yeah, get Sharky the Clown off the air. So yeah, I didn't know how yeah, Sal yeah. felt about me, Jump the Shark appearances, but, uh... But how do you think I truly feel about you, for real? Hands down, how do you think I truly, truly, truly feel? I think you're jealous of the relationships that I have with Howard and Gary. I think that you think that I am overpaid and don't work No, as as no, I don't think here. that. I swear, I never I made think, any implication that. That's wrong. I'm telling you right now. I think that you say you're doing a bit, but a lot of times it's how you really feel. And that's well, that's how I have say. to soften the blow. And uh, <laughs> I think that uh, you're going to have to find another ride home. No, that's terrible. Well, so are you. Scumbags. Everybody in this place is a scumbag. What happened to the good old... What happened What happened to honesty around here? What happened to it? You're honest? See what happens? You get it right in the fucking ass. I was honest about him, and now I miss rides home. So who gets fucked in the end? Me. Me and Lenny Bruce, condemned from our words. Condemned from the truth. So it's better to lie. It's better to lie. Let me. And you know... I don't know why Richard Johnson wants to wreck my, my relationship with Beth, but he goes after it all the time. How so? I, don't th I think he's jealous of me and Beth. Honestly, Richard Johnson writes page six in the Post. Every time he sees us, I don't know, he gets weird. I think he thinks I don't deserve her or something. I think he's got maybe a little crush on her or something. Maybe he's just pissed that you're having a good life. Yeah, I, there's something. You're I, supposed to be a sad man or something. I know. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. He's got a beautiful wife and everything. I don't know. Is he married again? Yeah, and he's got a kid, and I don't know why he's got to look at me. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. That kid's from another marriage. No, he's got a new kid. A new kid? Yeah. He's got a baby? I just know Beth's going to be really bummed 
bummed. I know you guys are going to think this is silly. Maybe you can talk me out of my weird feeling, but I haven't even called Beth yet. I might even call her now. But <laughs> Well, she usually gets up and reads these things, doesn't oh, she? Oh, she loves page six. I mean, she scours these tabloids like it's the Torah. So she might have already seen it. Yeah, I mean, if anything, like one thing about Beth, like she's on the internet all day looking up, like she'll call me and go, uh, Perez Hilton says, uh, blah, 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 blah. She's on Perez Hilton. She's on page six. She's on the Daily News. <laughs> she reads them to me, you know what I mean? And I like that, but she loves it. She reads Star Magazine, Inquirer, Globe, uh, uh, all of them, right. Us, In Touch, right. OK. Oh, my goodness. I get them all. It's, it, they're, they're literally there every, as soon as they're out, she's on top of them. <laughs> Doing a breakdown and analysis of Jake Gyllenhaal and whoever, whoever he's dating, whoever he's dating right. uh, Reese, Reese Witherspoon or whatever the fuck it is. Here, so listen to this. This is in page six with a picture of Beth. Now, mind you, I don't even mind this because this is ridiculous, but I know she's going to mind it. All right. Howard Stern admitted on his show last week that he was getting cold feet over his upcoming wedding to fiance Beth Ostrowski. And I don't believe I did that. I was talking about the size of the wedding and having to invite certain people and not wanting them there. Right. Like we both agreed this weekend. That and it was just an aside. It wasn't even like you were having a major, I'm having cold feet. Like this weekend, Beth and I both laid down the law about Sal not coming because <laughs> Beth was on the internet. And uh, someone had posted on YouTube at the roast when he was like calling her names and shit. And she got to hear it because she's on YouTube all the time. And she looked uh, up her own name. And she never got and to was, hear it. She never oh, heard no. it. Adulterated. Yeah. And she just got so fuming angry. She just was like, you know, he's a fucking asshole. I don't want him at my wedding. I go, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Dreaming about firing you. <laughs> Wait, when you put Beth's name into YouTube. Yeah, that comes Sal up. Sal comes up. Yeah. Yelling oh, and screaming about her. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so Beth goes, I wonder what... Oh, I'm that's the worst. Oh, so so here. Here's the article on page six. And I know this is going to... Because it doesn't upset me. Because I know I didn't. I don't have these feelings. Right. I'm, I'm, I asked her to marry me. It's not true. Hey, hey, Gary, can you get Beth on the phone? Yeah. Do you know how to call my house? I do. Oh, all right, do that. You know what's really horrible, though? I mean, even if you straighten this out with Beth... It becomes an all-day thing, Explanation. maybe an all-week well, not fires. thing. And like, I'm when some people call and go, "Wow, I read in the paper." And like, is everything okay? And like, I'm some sort of grand poobah that sits here and goes, you know, doesn't want to marry this beautiful woman, and meanwhile, I'm in love with her. But it, no matter how much I say I love her, this article is going to be more than what I say. You think? I know it because I always look guilty. It's like she, she, she'll probably <laughs> say, "Oh, you, you must have said look that." Guilty. Did I say to you I don't want to get married? You did say the term cold feet. Yeah. But it didn't because it had, of the have anything to do with you're wanting to get married. It was the size uh, yeah. and the yeah. explosion of all the details of a wedding. Where's Beth? Line 19. Thanks. Look, if you just print what we say on the show and print. You're in trouble. I mean, yeah. yeah it's like, <laughs> honey. I had a feeling you were going to call. Yeah, I'm all upset. Now, Robin just explained exactly what we said. Remember the other day we were on the air talking about. Are you upset about this article, by the way? No, it's just annoying. Right. I'm the one who has to deal with it. Yeah. That's what I was saying, that it has repercussions. I mean, I know. You're the, uh, I know. I said it's worse for Beth because, uh, listen, I have said a million times on the show, I'm in love with Beth. I never thought I'd get married, and she's the one person in the world that made me change all that. Mm -hmm. I, I love her. I want to be married to her. We had a discussion on the air the other day about how it was getting crazy, like we couldn't decide how many people to invite and how we didn't want Sal there and all that other stuff. You know, just fucking busting mm -hmm. Sal's balls and everything. And then there was an A-list and a B-list. A-list, B-list. Yeah. <laughs> but we I don't even have an A. We haven't even done that yet. And, and as Robin said... We were joking around. Oh, okay. And Robin even said to me just now, what did you say? That I said cold you feet, said but the in what kind of... cold feet, but it was about the size and the explosion of maybe it could be, it was going to be a big ceremony right. and the right. idea of walking down the... And that whole did thing... Did I ever say I had cold feet about marrying Never, Beth? Ever, ever, Never. ever. It was about a ceremony, a, w a wedding... You know, that kind of thing. And Robin would be the first one to... Oh, I'd jump all over you. Right. <laughs> oh, I, when I read it, I wasn't upset about... Because I, I had a, I mean, I know that it's someone t misconstruing something, but it's just a matter of I literally have to deal with it today. But why does Richard Johnson keep doing this to me? I thought I was a kind of a pal. We even have him on the show sometimes. I know. I see Richard out socially all the time. He's so lovely to us. I think he's jealous of our relationship. No, oh, God. He's got, he just got married and has I know. a baby. I don't know what his problem is. I don't think he wants me to be happy. I think he right. wants me and Beth he breaking up. He wants to be the only one, I guess, maybe. Here, listen to this. Howard Stern admitted on his show last week that he was getting cold feet over his upcoming wedding 
to it makes me sound like I'm some sort of grand poobah. And you're bailing. Like and like you sound I, like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like why would you be in a relationship where I don't want to marry you? Can you imagine? How horrible. I'm not that big an asshole. But I mean, yeah, just the woman who would be going through that. That's crazy. Uh, quote, I wonder what I'm doing getting married, the shock jock wondered aloud. I want nothing to do with a wedding. Well, if you take it out of context, it was, we were, forget it. Stern said that it was his idea to have a fancy wedding instead of running off somewhere. But now Beth wants to invite more people than Stern would like. But of course, Ostrowski can persuade him in the bedroom. I get horny and come up with wedding ideas, said Stern. Yeah, what's yeah, that? That's, I was talking about, you know how sometimes we're in bed. And in the middle of sex, I get all carried away, and I want to have a wedding like Lady Diana, and uh, you know. <laughs> so I said, it's "Very Beth, romantic, right?" <laughs> yeah, I said, "Beth and I, when we start doing it, I get really crazy." Right. That's which is lovely. Things if I ever want anything. What? <laughs> That's yeah. the time to ask you for things if I ever want anything. Yeah, like like you no, can get any. If, Robin, if you had sex with me in the middle <laughs> I of it, get anything. you can get anything. <laughs> I'm telling you. But I think that's beautiful. He's made it into an ugly thing. He's the one. Honey, you're the one that... I said I don't even need a wedding. You're the one who wanted a wedding. And I that's said, what he said. He said, in the I came up with this idea in the middle of having sex. You really did. <laughs> I did. Why don't you call Richard Johnson right now? Well... It does, what, because it doesn't. Why because you sabotaging us, trying to. Maybe I will. Yeah, that's a good Let's idea. Get him on the phone. I'm on too. Gary, is that possible? Do you yeah, know how let to? Me, let me work on. Hold on. He's probably going to be sleeping. He's got a baby at home. Yeah. Why don't I was just? I wish I had a newspaper where I could print that Richard Johnson doesn't love his baby. Right. Like he's having second thoughts about whether he wants to even be a father. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, have, I have a home number and a cell phone number. You want me to, I can dial it if, if you guys yeah, want. You know, his, well, you don't want to Forget call it. I don't want to wake the guy up. Call his cell. Yeah, but that his cell might be on. Right, yeah. I'll try that. Let's leave him a message. You want me to bring it in or you want me to call it? Uh, you call it and just ask him if he'll come on with us. I got to get to the bottom of why he's trying to wreck my life. Let's go to Jack, meanwhile. Jack, you're on the air. Wow, this is fucking boring. Put Eric the Midget on or something. No, listen, dude, I got to straighten this out. This guy keeps writing stuff that I'm not, uh, these are not my feelings. I'm you sorry. You said it on the radio. You I don't didn't wanna... say that. I, you, you can pull a line out of context saying I'm getting cold feet, I, but I wasn't getting cold feet about marrying Beth. I already had it best the other day when he said that Two years from now, when you're playing and coaching Little League, you're not going to want to do that either. Asshole. I don't like you, Jack. <laughs> That's out of context. I'm canceling yeah, that, your... that didn't... Uh... I'm canceling your subscription. <laughs> <laughs> Take his serious away. What happened, Gar? Anything? So it was straight to uh, voicemail, left a message. Okay, okay. Sure. all right. All right, honey. Maybe I'll, we'll hear from him later. I'll I'm call sure him later. A hardworking guy like Richard Johns, he's probably up following some gossip story oh, sure. right now. Yeah. He's probably out on the trail I'll of Jessica to ruin, Simpson. Ruin somebody else's life. He's camped out in front of some rehab. He's probably looking for Lance Bass's boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, look at the guy's job. <laughs> he's trying to figure. He's trying to measure the short shorts of Jessica Simpson to see how much ass is hanging out of the bottom of the shorts. Because you know. Well, anyway, honey, I do love you. Thank you. And I do want to marry you. Thank you. I'm not sure to the, we, as you are not sure what kind of wedding we actually do want to have. Neither of us know yet. Well, yeah. That's all I was saying. And you can't even have any fun trying to figure that out with Richard Johnson. <sighs> In the bushes. Everyone all day is going to be feeling sorry for me. Well, yeah. that's what I said. That's the bad part. <laughs> Everybody coming. How is everything? Is everything okay? Yeah, well, you know what? We'll get married and we'll shut everyone up. And then they can write something else about how we're miserably married. Oh, then they'll say, you know, because this is now record, you know, Howard finally put, you know, his, his uh, cold feet aside and did it anyway. Bit the bullet. Well, there's something else that was in, uh, not something else recently that you said that you dissed me again or something. What was that again? That was another weird. I'm just what I'm saying. The guy's on some sort of rip. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And I can't said? remember it, what, what the story was. Yeah, that I dissed you somehow. I remember that one, too. I don't remember what it was, but I dissed you. Yeah. Poor me. Poor me. Poor, Poor me. me. Another glass of. <laughs> I'm fine. I love you. Talk to you later. And I love you as well. I have to go to the gym. Good. All right. Like her nice and toned. I don't want to see any cellulite. (laughs) Thank you, honey. Bye. Cellulite's the end of everything.
Oh, stop it. Print that. He'll print, print that. that. I know. <laughs> Stern today added, cellulite is the end of everything. It's also a comedy show we do. I mean, you know. Right. Like, well, that's the whole point. Yeah, He's I'm taking to... everything for, uh, as the gospel. There's an agenda here. Yeah, he hates you, I think. I think he does. I think he's jealous. I mean, technically, like we say, you could literally just print what you said about cellulite, and it would look like you were an ogre. Oh, right. a horror <laughs> story. You know? Yeah, I got to straighten that out with him and go, hey, dude, are we on the same team, or, or do I got to, you know, do I got to start uh, gearing up against you? What's going on here? What kind of man are you? You're trying to fuck my relationship up, dude. He's you, a dangerous you, guy. You know, I mean, what, what, what's, what's what did the, you do to him? Yeah, what's the agenda here? Hello? Hey, Ed. Hey, I just want to say one thing. This whole situation is messed up. Howard, you know that you're too good for Beth. She's a beautiful woman, and you could be together with her forever, but this marriage thing just isn't going to work out. What? Thanks. <laughs> Who are you, and how do you know this? This is the audience speaking. Do you know my, my mom? I, I, By the way, thanks for, to Howard. thanks for saying that, Ed. Um, hey, do you, do you respect my opinion? This is Richard Johnson. I know it. <laughs> Well, what, what is your opinion? Yeah, I don't why, what, what do you base this on? Why do you say this? She is too beautiful, and Howard, you are too much of the man. Too beautiful to be together. Okay, yeah, thanks. I'm going to try and understand you. That doesn't even you, but, make any sense. Yeah, that, you're not being clear. No, what I'm trying to say to you is that basically <laughs> you two are too great for each other. You're both too good. Welcome to another edition of What the Fuck is Ed Talking right. About? <laughs> yeah, we have a What the Fuck is Ed Talking About channel if you want to hear more of Ed. <laughs> I'm, sure, it's, uh, I'm sure in his life you, a lot of people want more statements that make no sense. Tune to. <laughs> Look, you kidding me, bro? Quit uh, busting my balls. Come on. I don't know what you're talking about, Ed. Busting your balls. I think what? she's perfect for me, and I'm, I'm hopefully perfect for her, and we have a great time together, and we're going to get married, and that's it. Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. You tried, tried what? What are you... T we don't even understand what you're I'm saying. Try I'm trying to wreck the marriage, all right? Oh, okay. With Beth. Good job. You want to be with Beth. Oh, I... I want to be with Beth, all right? <laughs> Howard, I love you and everything, but I want to be with Beth. All right, Ed. Thanks. <laughs> you're a good Richard man. Johnson. That's different. <laughs> now you're, we understand. I think that's Richard Johnson's angle on all this. <laughs> Maybe. Well, Thanks, Ed. Boy, he got married awful fast, didn't he? Because I see Richard Johnson at some of these movie screenings and stuff, and Beth and I walk in. Beth will be decked out in a little dress and everything. I mean, maybe maybe he's, like, envious or something, or uh, angry with me. That could be. That could be. Well, I could see him at no. one of these parties on, like, a Tuesday night that you can't make it to, mm -hmm. going up to Beth with a martini. Like, You're a very beautiful woman. <laughs> you shouldn't be alone on a Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know why, what the agenda is here. Oh, man, if the fucking my city is, is fucking scoured with scoundrels. And you know what the press is like you know they build you up just to tear you down now it was like you had this fairy tale relationship now they're trying to push up punch holes in it yeah i don't know my, my my mom listen to this my mom's telling me she went to a chinese restaurant right. okay and she got the fortune the fortune cookie at them my father yes, goes yes yes when she's telling me this she goes i went to the chinese restaurant and I got this fortune. Uh, well, well, I should back up the story, actually. I had a terrible weekend. A horrible weekend. Oh, right. I invited my parents out to my house. That is horrible. No, I'm only uh, This was terrible. <laughs> for, some mean, people, for some people, that's all you need. That's the <laughs> recipe. And, you know, my parents are getting older and stuff. And, and uh, you know, I do really adore them. And the, and the thing is, I invited them over. My, my youngest daughter was with me this weekend. And... We were going to have just some nice family time, and, and my, my dad wanted turkey meatballs and pasta, and we had it all made. And that sounds good. It was a lot of fun. So they walk in. I'm bringing their bags in, and my mom missed two steps. Oh, my God. Went flying oh. down onto the floor. Now, I, I, I was bringing the bags in, and I turn around, and I see my mom laying on the floor, crumpled over, f flat on her face, wow. moaning. Oh, my goodness. And I picked her up my arms. I started to cry like a baby. I just, I picked, I thought she was dead. Robin, I thought my mom was dead. And I'm just picking up, I go, oh, mom, what happened? What happened? I was like, I don't oh. even like thinking about it. I've had nightmares ever since. And I'm holding her, and she's all upset. Was she all right? Well, she goes, I think I broke something. I think I, so at least she was talking. And then uh -huh. I'm holding her. And when I'm holding my arm, she felt so frail, you know, like mm. I always remember my mom as being like the sturdy Strong. woman. And I realized, wow, my mom's old, you know, and 
it just sucked like I can't even tell you. So I'm holding her, and I was like, oh, Ma, what happened? What happened? I, and I was just so upset. She goes, no, no, I think I broke something. But she was talking about her glasses. She thought she broke her glasses. She uh, fell on, now. She fell off. Too, like you know when you think there's there's no step and you just yeah, walk. Right. right. You right. step like it's and not there and you lose your balance. And there's a marble floor. So she oh. fell down. Mm. And I said, okay, if she's at least she's talking. She's not dead. I thought she was dead at first. Honest to God, I thought she was dead. So then I'm holding her and my daughter's all upset and everyone's just upset. And then my mom gets. She was able to get up after about ten minutes. Mm. And uh, I took her over to the hospital. They x-rayed her. They were great. They were great at the hospital. They x-rayed her. Uh, there was no fracture, no break. It was a miracle. I'm telling you, I don't even understand how, mm -hmm. you know, she only got three mm -hmm. stitches in her leg. Oh, she and, really, she was uh, bleeding. She had hurt herself. Yeah. And uh, it was a miracle. She's really banged up and bruised. Like, she, she oh. can't use her right arm and stuff. But they, the doctor said, like, for the first day, it'll be really sore. And then as days goes on, she'll be a lot right. better. But I was just distraught, and then Ugh. they went right home because you know oh, they would no. be more comfortable. Oh so that was yeah, yeah. Just it was the end a, of the weekend. But my mother says to me, "You know, I should have known." I went to the Chinese restaurant, and my father starts getting upset. He goes, "I told you never to read a fortune. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I would never ever pick up a, a cookie." My father's so. I don't know. He controls everything in his world. <laughs> exactly. I would never. I never look at these cookies. He you goes, don't want that cookie. My mother goes, "I went to the Chinese restaurant." And I open up my fortune, and it said, things are not going to go your way. Uh, now, first I got mad. I said, you know something, Ma? I would fucking sue that Chinese restaurant's <laughs> uh, fortune cookie company. I, said, I read an article on fortune cookies. Yeah. And fortune cookies are, there's only three factories, I think, on the planet that make fortune cookies. That, that make the fortune, the piece right. of paper. With I would have the thought fortune. there's only one of them. Is, yeah, yeah, they're how could almost, there be four? I right. think there's three, but <laughs> it might didn't. even be one now. This was years ago I read about them. And every fortune is supposed to be positive. Right, You're not right. supposed to get a negative fortune. I never Little heard of that. Little kids get these fortunes. Right. Well, did you actually see what was written? I didn't see it, but my father, she made my father read it, and she read it. And he got angry. He was like, I, I have never. He says, do you know years ago you would go out and you would, <laughs> for a penny, you could weigh yourself and it would give you a fortune. Your weight and a fortune. Right. I never would read the fortune. <laughs> I would get my weight. And I'm like, he my, would spend the penny just for his weight. I, I was thinking to myself, my dad has rules about, my dad has rules about everything in life. He's already considered everything. About fortunes now. And, 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 and my mother goes, well, I like to read the fortune. I go, Ma, it's okay to read the fortune. It's supposed to be idiot-proof. It's supposed to be fail-safe. It's supposed to be a positive message in the fortune. There's never a negative fortune in I the fortune. I never heard you of know one. what? That's also like, you know, voodoo only works if you believe in it. You can't let a well, little piece of paper rule your life. As soon as my mom got up, she goes, I knew it. I, the fortune said oh. well, things so are not she was supposed to stay in bed or something? Things are not going to go your way. I would never read a fortune, ever. So I it, never have read a fortune. But <laughs> is your father saying the fortune forced her to fall or she would have fallen no, regardless no. of the fortune? What he's saying is the fortune upset her and he doesn't do anything that will upset him or her. But you know, she's now saying that she's, she's now saying she's making a joke. But meanwhile, you could see it bothered her. The fortune, the fortune really bothered her. But you can live into, you know, yeah. what you believe. You bet. That's well, terrible. Anyway, I tell you, it's terrible that she fell and had to go right. Home. And when I I'm saw my mom laying on the floor and I'm holding her in my arms, I said, oh, man, I love this woman. I do not. You know, I, I think about, you know, your situation with your father. I mean, I was just like. It's hard to look at that, yeah. yeah so, I, especially I, I, someone who was a caretaker to you for so long. And, and to so see strong my, yeah. and that you looked right. up to. To see my mother Absolutely. suffering for two seconds was killing me inside. And I'm thinking about Artie to have his father laying in bed for as a, years. for years. Bro, you got to go to a therapist because I'm telling you, man, <laughs> I'm I so fucked up over this. I couldn't sleep. I had nightmares all night of my father being on the ground, right. my mother being mm. on the ground, and my dog even being on the ground. How old yeah. were you, Artie, when that happened? I was 18 when he fell. Wow. Let me tell you. And then he died when I was 22. Mm. You got to go because I'm telling you, I can't, I, this was nothing you compared to what- You still have trouble getting over this. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I, I was wrecked. I held her in my arms and I was weeping like a baby. I was like, oh, ma, oh, man. You know, I just, I couldn't believe it. My mom laying there like that, mm. uncomfortable. And an old woman. This is the woman, you know, that I depended on for everything. And, and she came through.
If you think about it, it's gonna, there's never been a generation that's been more in touch with their feelings in a way, you know? So it's going to be harder for this generation to deal with those kind of losses. I've seen people go through this, and, I'm, you know, it's devastating to them. Right. Yeah, in fact, Beth said to me, I think People don't hold a, that shit in anymore. You know? No, Beth I mean, they me, get crazy. I think you're going to have a harder time with your parents getting older than you thought. Right. It's hard. It's very they, difficult. Uh, they go on medication because, right. you know, they just can't well, handle it. And then when I took my mom to the hospital, like, you know, she it was like she's sitting there and she's not hearing so good. And I'm yelling out the answers. And then, you know, there's some woman next to us in the next bed screaming, I need morphine. I need morphine. She goes, I've been uh. in a terrible car accident. I go, Mom, you hear this woman? She goes, what woman? She don't even hear it. Oh, right. So I'm like, like, Good, she's better she's, off. Yeah, right. She's screaming and yelling. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, the, the way thing. some people speak at the hospital, they, they, they treat the help there like dogs. I mean, I don't know how. I, I'm surprised somebody doesn't slip them more, like the angel of death doesn't come in and just put them to sleep. <laughs> there haven't been enough angels of death. Yeah, like she's like, I want a cigarette. I have a terrible nicotine addiction. Oh, I mean, geez. I was just like, shut that up. That like a gem of a person. Oh, my God. I was going, I'm laying in the hospital with my mother. I'm worried out of my mind. This woman next, you could tell. She just wanted the morphine and cigarettes. or something. And like she goes, that. well, if you want let me have my morphine, get, I need to walk out and get a cigarette. And they're like, go, <laughs> just go. <laughs> and I'm listening to this and I'm trying to pay attention to my mother. But it was like weird just seeing her, you know, and then the, 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 the and then like even they, when they admit her, she's on different medications, like an old woman. You know, my mom was Your never. Your mom a, takes a lot of medication. Yeah, she has high blood pressure. Yeah. She has this, she has that. It's just, you know, and then she tells me she has this, this and that. I'm like, it's like, what the fuck, man? I, and, you know, and getting older just sucks. It's life, it's, yeah. It just sucks dick. I don't know, man. I just was bummed out. And then they had to go home, and it was just—it was just a yeah, that's, shitty weekend. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's it was really I, upsetting. I admire some celebrities who won't let the public see them when they're old. You know what I mean? Like they, yeah, you know, you don't want to. You want to remember them as they were. That image, or at least the people around them do that. Yeah, Cl- yeah, Clint Eastwood about, take a hint. Uh, uh, well, yeah, in a way, I mean, have disappeared recently. That it's like, yeah, where is this person or that person? I haven't seen them in a long time, and right. it's a good thing. Every time I see Clint Eastwood, I go, I always say about that was the best looking guy on the planet. What ho- was there for me? <laughs> and he was strong and sturdy. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, oh, my. What a mess. The dude was a god. Well, he's not going to go away now. <laughs> now the Inquirer has great like director. His, now the Inquirer has his varicose veins when he's in a bathing <laughs> suit. And really, it's a horrible set of varicose veins. Yeah, and his man titties and everything else. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. They got no fucking class, some of these tabloids. Leave the Clint Eastwood alone. It's weird when you said that, though. When you said looking at your mother that first time when she was... You know, hurting like that, that yeah. initial shock of it reminded me of it, it never got worse with my father than the the initial shock of seeing him right after uh. the accident. Because, you know, you're talking about a guy I played catch with used to hurt my hand from throwing the ball to me so hard. Yeah, that's a complete right. change to try to do pull ups on his biceps as a kid, you know, and the first time I saw him. He, they put that fucking halo in his head, and he's like, they're trying to balance his spine like this in a hospital, uh, and he wasn't in the proper hospital, and it's just that initial of whoa, shock of my god, this is this is one of my parents in that kind of atmosphere and in that way, it's it's really like a it's. You, you I used to you. work in an you gotta uh, go talk about open it. heart yeah. surgery unit for a while, and I used to have to you know people would faint because you know they're. Their loved one walked in. Right. Mm. And if you see somebody coming out of open heart surgery, they look like they're dead. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. these people would walk in and they would faint looking at their loved one lying in the bed in that condition. So right. I can imagine yeah. what it was like for an 18 year old guy. Yeah, I tell you, I didn't handle this well at all. I mean, I was just really upset. My mother was like, it's nice to feel so loved and you care about me. I go, yeah, you're my mother. Look at what I had to do to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, yeah, look, yeah, she was almost <laughs> worth it for her. She's that I gave a shit. Yeah, because you realize she's um, a person that if you were hurting at any point in your life, there's nothing she wouldn't do to help you feel better, too. You know, you're dealing with that kind of unconditional love. So anyway, changing topics, if I well, may. Well, I'm sorry that happened. Yes, That's horrible. Thank you. But she's all right, uh, right? She's yeah, she's going to be fine. Um, but I don't know. It just makes me worry more, if you know what I mean. Then I wanted to buy them a TV. I've been trying to buy them a... Uh, TV for the house, you know, they, they got this fucking TV, I bought them a hundred years ago, so I want to get them one of these nice flat screens. Well, yeah. oh, I was going to say, what are you, upgrading so to like an HD set or something? Right. So a friend, of, yeah, you know, I wanted to get them in some TiVo, you know, yeah. so I had a friend who was going to go over with me and measure and all this, and 
And my mother goes, I just got a call from Laura, your assistant, and she wants uh, to come measure, and uh, we don't want that right now. Uh, I go, Ma, it'll be nice. What do you mean you don't want it? Well, now that I'm hurt, I just don't want to have to deal with anything new. Um, I go, Ma, let me measure. By the time the TV comes, you'll be fine. Yeah. (laughs) So they won't even get that. Like, they just, they, they just... You know, you can't Don't do anything. Change for them. things too rapidly, yeah. Oh. And then I got them a DVD player a couple of months ago. They love it. Right, but they don't know they're going to love it. Right. They just like what they know. My father gets up and says, I don't want that TV. <laughs> you know, they, meanwhile, the high def is so much clearer. It's you know, wonderful. But they, oh, they just fight it. And they love to watch movies. It'll be great for them. Yeah. Uh, with the, yeah, they sit home all day. A DVD on that screen would be great. Your father doesn't want it. Yes, King of All Blacks. Yeah, Howard, man, that that story is. is I, I know people might not understand it, but it's very, it's very touching, and I know what you mean. It, it, it it's, it's almost like a preview of what's going to happen. Like what, like what are, what are we going to, what are you going to do when they, when they die, man? That's right. Yeah, I mean, it was it was flashes of that, and I, I just it just was horrible, and I felt I horrible. To- I, w- I kept playing it back, like, what if I had just not brought in the bags and walked my mom into the house? I like, know, I know. But I was trying to w- w- get the bags. I was doing too much. I should have kept my eye on her. And, oh, man, it just, I, I, it's just so bad. I went up to my parents' house yesterday, and I was, and my mother, you know, after I lost my, my brother, I mean, I don't want to bring the show up, but my brother died last year, oh. and, my, and my mother had a stroke. And and I mean, my hey mom, King, no offense, but nobody cares about you and your mom. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just about me. This is a Howard TV original production. Hi, I'm Daniel Carver, a frequent guest on the Howard Stern Show, and a member of the Q Plus Clan. Welcome to my home. I can show you in my home is our living room. Uh, we don't stay here too often, but it's our living room, and some of my wife's dolls are in this room. As you can see, we've got cabinets full of dolls. And my wife, she likes people dolls. She's got George Burns, she's got a lot of the presidents, she's got John Kennedy. These dolls here, they're cabbage patch dolls. This doll here. One of the first ones she ever got, she's had it probably 25 years, and it was one of the first Cabbage Patch dolls made. This is just a few of her favorite ones. She has thousands of dolls. Okay, we'll leave this first living room that we looked at, and we'll go up in the uh, the attic uh, and see some more of my wife's dolls. <laughs> I'm not really into dolls. I don't collect dolls. My wife loves dolls, so I gave her this room up here. It's about 12 by 70 to keep her less favorite dolls. She lined the walls up here, and she's got thousands of dolls. First one you see at the top of the steps will be a nigger. Over on the right here, we got the colored section. We got Michael Jordan, just a whole bunch of niggers. They're dolls, and she collects dolls, and we don't discriminate. We do keep them separated. We segregate. <laughs> these over here are these holiday Barbies. I mean, them things, they cost my fortune. Some of them things sell at the flea market for three or $400. If she sees a doll she ain't got, she'll get it if I have to pawn something. Now, this is our dining room table with eight chairs. Uh, just me and my wife lives here, but sometimes we'll have company. In. This is where we all sit down to eat. This is a china cabinet. Well, my wife got a few dishes that she likes to collect. Yeah, my son, Daniel Carver Jr., he's good with woodworking, and he built this cabinet here. This little display right here in the corner, this is Aunt Jemima. 
my wife collects some of this kind of junk. Everybody thinks Aunt Jemima was cute. All these little Aunt Jemima figurines down here. My wife collects it. This little Aunt Jemima nigger here kind of reminds me of Robin. It's my favorite little collector nigger here. If I gotta have one around, that'd be a good one. Okay, when we leave the dining room, you walk out the back door here and you come out to one of our decks. Out here on the back deck, we look out over the Chattahoochee River. And uh, you can see out here in the backyard a deer just come running up that you'll never see in New York City unless you go to the zoo and then you got them surrounded by niggers. We got a grill out here. That's the George Foreman grill. He's a nigger, but he made a pretty good grill. <laughs> Okay, you've seen the dining room and the back deck. Now we'll go into the kitchen where we do the cooking. This piece of furniture right here is another piece of furniture that my son built. That's the kitchen sink. There's a stove, and this is where my wife prepares meals. She's a good cook. You can tell my lady how to eat good. <laughs> we don't have a dishwasher. My wife's a dishwasher. <laughs> okay, this is the refrigerator. This is a box of ice cream here, and I eat ice cream almost every night. I eat beef, hot dog. Sometimes you'll have to pick pork for company, but I don't eat pork, I eat beef. This is a refrigerator part. You got milk, watermelon. We got that, I thought Robin might be coming, so I had her a watermelon. Plenty of Coke, some water, and plenty of drinks. You want a Coke? <laughs> All right, you've seen the kitchen, dining room, living room. Now we'll go down the hall. This is the bathroom that's closest to the kitchen. Everybody knows what's in the bathroom. There's a shower, a commode, a sink. Okay, we'll leave this little bathroom. Go down the hallway here. This room right here is, my wife is a member of the Red Hat Society. The Red Hat is, once the lady turns over 50 years old, they can join a club called the Red Hat Club. You see Red Hat pictures on the wall, Red Hats everywhere. Red Hat bedspread, Red Hat, Red Hat. Everything in here is Red Hat. These got nothing to do with Red Hat. I, I was down in New Orleans at a Mardi Gras, and they threw these to me off of one of the floats, and I brought them home. <laughs> now, how would I like me? Okay, we'll leave that bedroom and go into the, the main bedroom. This is where me and my wife sleeps. That's the bed. We've got mirrors so we can see ourselves sleep. This piece of furniture right here, all of this, is another piece that my son built. He hand carved the emblem of the clan on mine. And he built my wife one that matches mine. Inside of it is just clothes. This is my blackjack t-shirt. I wear it when I go to the casino a lot of times. This is the bedroom, and this is the master bathroom, I guess. Got a sink in the mirror in the bathtub here. This is a closet here where we keep all of our clothes. We got hers on this side and mine on this side, so. All right, we'll leave the master bedroom and go into this bedroom. That's just another guest bedroom. We have company, they can sleep here, and we got a television, got a DVD player, they can watch a movie. Okay, from here, we'll uh, go down to the lower level. So these stairs are kind of narrow, don't y'all fall off key, so. This is my basement, and this is where we spend most of our time. I sit right here at the computer. I play on the computer and watch the television. We got the television over here. This is my television. That's a big screen because I can't see too good. I've got Howard Stern on there right now. This is my roast. I'm watching my roast. That's an angry nigger. This picture here, it's got a picture of me in one corner, a picture of the clan bud drop patch. If we have a lot of a lot of company, they can sit around in here. This is a fireplace. It really don't burn real wood. It works on gas. This is a piano. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis visits a lot, so we got him a piano. Almost all of my pictures here are, are Confederate pictures. You have Nathan Bedford Forrest. Nathan Bedford Forrest was a general who started the Ku Klux Klan. 
a lot of us, like myself, think we've lost the battle. I mean, this country has been over flooded with, with Mexicans, even worse than niggers, so that's why I moved up here in the mountains. I can't beat them, I move away from them. This is a bedroom here. We got several of small bedrooms for the grandkids. This is a bedroom we built for the grandsons. When they come over, they they stay in here. So there's more boy toys in this room. Okay, from here I'll take you to the lower deck that overlooks the river. This is our lower deck. You come out here in the mornings uh, and watch the deer, and we can see the Chattahoochee River. You know, you can build a mansion anywhere, but you can't build a Chattahoochee River. Out here, we got a little yard swing area. You get at Walmart and sit out here and swing and watch the deer. You see two of them right there now, and sometimes there's 20 or 30 of them. There's another barbecue grill. Sometimes I get real lazy and lay on my hammock right there. Well, we're leaving the house now. We're going down towards the river. Uh, we'll pass by my dog pen where I have a couple of, of dogs. They're half pit bull, half chow. You have to keep them in a pen because you can't trust a black dog. <laughs> Going down to the river, and I have a dock down here. This river starts in Helen, Georgia, and runs all the way to the ocean. Right here, the water is so clean that you could drink it. This is the dock that I built so we could have a place to sit. If it rains, we can go inside. If it starts raining, we come in here. It's just a place to get in out of the rain when we're down on the dock. I built everything around here myself. I built the house, I built the dock. If I hadn't built it myself, I couldn't afford it. Okay, this contraption here is a deer feeder that throws out corn. I can walk up to it and give it a spin by hand. Uh, like that, and it throws out corn. The deer hears it, and they usually come and running. Within a, a few seconds, the deer will be out here eating corn. As you can see, we threw out a little corn while ago, and now there's a couple of deer down here eating. This is just another one of the cement niggers I made. And this is a Dutch boy and girl, they were made out of cement. I used to make a lot of cement stuff, but I, I don't do it anymore. Getting old, need to rest. Okay, before I show you my garage with some of my toys in it, uh, I'll show you my guard out here. This is an angry nigger sitting here in the swing. He keeps an eye on, the, on my garage in the house. This is my work truck. It's a 2002 F-350. I do roofing business and I stay in this truck. I have serious satellite radio in it. I have my laptop computer set up in it. It's just my work truck. This is some of our toys. We just got this car here. It's a Dodge Charger Daytona. There were only 1,400 of them made and that's number 58. It's got the Hemi in it. This is my favorite ride here. This is my Honda Goldwing. It's a GL1800, got a six-cylinder engine. Fastest as I ever had it, 140. Usually I cruise around 100. It's got a CB, CD player. This is a real Georgia state flag. Uh, before a bunch of idiots changed it. Thanks for letting me show you my home. Y'all got to go now. Bye.
looking for men who want to date Jackie's ex-wife, Nancy. Remember Nancy? I saw a picture of Nancy in one of the offices here the other day. Very attractive. My hands start to shake when I see those pictures. Really? <laughs> well, it's funny. I was, I was uh, you know, Nancy. Uh, the first time I'm ever meeting her. Oh, I love Well, she's not coming in today. She's going to be on the phone. Screen. Oh. We're going to screen, guys. Then she's going to come in for the actual ah, dial a date okay. kind of thing. Okay. So it's we, a two-parter. It's a two-parter. <laughs> but uh, Nancy, of course, was uh, married to Jackie and also his manager. So many times we dealt with her about, you know, money. His issues. Yeah. And also how great a talent Jackie was. And she would remind us of it. Yes. Not to mention the fact what a great talent she was when she started her own recording career. Well, we debuted many of her albums. She's you know. come in and performed. And uh, also she's done several plays. I always thought Nancy had a thing for me that I could have fucked yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Like, ja- like I used to ride my bike down to their house. Like I got into this bike riding kick for a short phase. and The my- only place to go was Jackie's house. Yeah, it was 15 miles to Jackie and 15 back, and that was like a good ride for mm-hmm. me. So, And he lived down by the water, so it was kind of cool. I could ride my bike down to the beach. Uh-huh. And sometimes I'd go there, and I'd imagine that maybe Jackie wouldn't be home. Mm-hmm. Although he was always around. I'd knock on the door. I'd knock on the door. Nancy would answer in a negligee. <laughs> and I was in my sexy bike outfit. You know, those tight, tight right. pants. Right. Did you wear those? Uh, with the big thing in the bottom that looks like you have a big, big load. big wad. A big wad to pad your <laughs> asshole. Like a diaper. <laughs> the big diaper in the bottom. <laughs> and my special shoes, my riding shoes. And did and, you wear one of those very colorful shirts with yeah. the stripes? Yeah. And I'd, I'd unzip it kind of low so Nancy could see my physique. And then you had your little bike helmet? Yeah. And I was hoping, like, maybe she'd, like, say, you know, I just want to blow you or something. And then, I'd, and, I'd, and then I'd have that dilemma, like, I work with Jack, he's a good guy. But I think I would have let her. Really? Probably. I'm a, I'm a real scumbag that way, you know? That's terrible. I think with my penis. That is terrible. Yeah. You are not a bro. No. You were right. Party. Don't trust me with your he women. He is not a bro. <laughs> Don't trust me around your woman. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest about it. He is so not a bro. No. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> hey, I am a bro. I tell people up front, I'm going to fuck your wife. <laughs> Who else would do that for That's you? That's right. I'm a good dude. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, later on in the show, Nancy will call in and we'll screen for three guys. Hi, Nancy Sirianni, formerly Martlin here. So I'm about to talk to Howard on the phone, which I haven't done in quite a few years, and uh, play Dial-A-Date, where I'm going to pick three gentlemen who one of them I will date after next week. We'll all be in the studio live next week. So I'm looking for a um, very important a Yankee fan. Um... I'd love to have a date with somebody who plays Scrabble, and I like I like guys who will run barefoot. So we'll see. I'll see who fits that criteria, and uh, hopefully have a really fun date. So here I go. All right, everyone remembers Nancy Sirianni, Big formerly part of the show, formerly Nancy Sirianni Martling. She's dropped the Martling. She's dropped the Martling and dropped the Jackie. (laughs) I always knew you two would break up. You you predicted it all the time, yeah. She was too hot and horny. (laughs) She, you know, I knew she wanted it. I knew, like, sometimes I would think when I used to ride my bicycle over your house Mm. that maybe, like, Jackie wouldn't be there, but of course she was always around. Like, maybe you would, like, blow me or something. You thought that. I did. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I would fantasize about it. Like maybe I'd go over there and you'd dance at the door in a negligee. <laughs> well, you used yeah. to tell Jackie that Nancy wanted you. All you had to oh, do yeah. was hit on her. You could take her right away. Nancy and I used to write dirty emails to each other. I remember mm-hmm. that. Yeah. I remember that too. It was nice. Would have been nice. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I was shocked to hear you want to go on a dial a date. Well, I just want to go on a date. <laughs> Jackie, actually. I, I didn't necessarily need to dial it up, but... I wanted I mean, to call it... I do. Who wants to bang Jackie's ex-wife, but, Yeah, yeah, we were being very <laughs> vulgar about it at one but point. You, but you're not guaranteed that you'll bang her. You can go on a date right. with her. And that no would be guarantee. kind of cool to, to, to actually have a sexual shot at Nancy. Uh, absolutely. What happened that's with you and Jackie? That's what I'm saying. What happened with you, Jackie? You know what my perception was? As what? soon as Jackie lost the show, you dumped his ass. Oh. <laughs> Which well, I couldn't blame you. Yeah, no, that's not how it happened. Really? But it did happen after he left the show. Uh, not really, no. Oh, it happened before? Yeah. I thought Nancy was going to be like, Jackie, let me get this straight. You just quit the show. <laughs> and you're going to support us how? 
Yeah, really. <laughs> I think I hear uh, my train. Yeah, I think the train just pulled out and I'm on it. <laughs> it's time for me to go. But Jackie had quit drinking. He did what you wanted. Too late. Really? It's too, always yeah, too late. Too yeah, much he hurt. Quit drinking right at, right at that same time. And, and you he's were been without a drink ever since. I told Jackie once that I thought you were banging some of the guys in your band. Yeah. Was I right or wrong? Tell the truth. You were wrong. Oh, bullshit. Never? No one in Big Orange Marble? All of them. All of them. <laughs> See, I know it. How are you looking these days? Are you still hot or did you hit the I wall? so, yeah. <laughs> I look the same. You do? Yeah. Still, still have the good body? Yep. Really? Still same. Still, I'm still wearing my clothes from high school. Wow. Yeah, she was a little thing. You know what else I hear that's weird between her and Jackie? Like, sometimes, like, after they got divorced, they started dating one another. They'd go out on dates. I heard that, too. Did you guys date? Well, I see him. No, yeah. but right after your divorce, were you two, like, seeing each other for a while? I, I don't think so. No? no, I had heard you were dating him. No, we, we're, we're still, we're very, very good friends. See, I don't even we, buy that they're really good friends. Like, that's... Why? Because, like, even on your website, you, you link to everybody's web page but Jackie's. You know what? My website is, is new, and I just forgot. Right. That's exactly. a fun, uh, an interesting I'm drop do that out. This, I'll do that this afternoon. Like, that's yeah, the that's ultimate... A, that's a big omission. In Jackie Nancy world, that's the ultimate smack in the head when oh, you don't yeah. link to their <laughs> website. Yeah. I swear I did not do that on purpose. Hey! I don't, there's, not, there's not even a section that says links, though, you know? Because Jackie used I, to go, why don't you put Nancy's website on link to howardstern.com and do us a big favor? <laughs> and be like, okay, but... You know, I didn't ask for that. No, I know. Oh. Jackie wanted you to be famous in the worst way. One of the weird things was, like, Jackie and Nancy were sort of in Loserville. Uh-huh. You know what I mean. They, 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 Jackie was playing bachelor. They had bachelor a lifestyle. Jackie was playing bachelor parties and all that stuff. And Nancy was, you know, an up-and-coming musician and everything. And, but like a folk uh, artist. Yeah, and then Jackie took off on our show. And Jackie, you know, Nancy was like, when is my time going to come now? <laughs> I'm still waiting. I know. <laughs> it's time to concentrate on my career. And, and thus my appearance today. So she's here today, and you're still trying to make it musically, right? I'm, I'm doing actually pretty well. I'm doing fine. I saw you open up for Taylor Hicks. Yeah, t a couple of weeks ago. American oh, Idol. good. Guy. Yeah, that was very exciting. So, where'd you, so what, is you and Jackie, are you divorced or you're not divorced? Oh, no comment. <laughs> you mean it's not official? It's like uh, you're just separated? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into the legality of it. But we want to know who we're dating here. I mean, yeah, are we I mean, dating a married woman? Yeah, I could get serious about you. No, I totally am. I'm a totally single woman. You're separate. You're legally separated? Yes. Oh. You never actually yeah. went ahead and got the divorce? No. Oh. But you split everything. He told me he gave you, like, 50 of those houses, those shitty houses he and had. And he got one. He, he, got <laughs> he, gave, he gave them to me. I know, Nancy gets upset about that because she feels she earned them as well. That's right. They were you our know. I'm sorry. Houses. Yes, that's right. You split up your prop, your joint property. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jackie, you want to know how much she took for, as a manager? Yeah, I say, how much does Nancy charge you for the manager? It turns out 50%. Turned out. Yeah. Yep. Well, she's got some dough. I know she's got a bunch of those houses. She's a good-looking woman. Yeah, I'm looking in the paper today, and it says that Shaquille O'Neal and his wife are splitting up. And one of the reasons was she was too secretive about her finances. Really? I was like, mm. she didn't have any finances. What finances? <laughs> no, she earned that basketball money. <laughs> but Nancy's a good woman. She is. You know, I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i put it out there for the guys. Here's the negatives. A, you're going to have to sort of... She'll manage you. <laughs> yeah, A, she'll manage no, you. That's B, not true. B, you're probably going to have to put up some money for some record albums. <laughs> That's not true. Well, you know, Jackie built you that. Rec I mean, you guys Studios built that recording and studio all that, yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. So you know. I have, a, and I, and I'm, <clears throat> and I'm set up to do that work now. So. so oh, so she still has the studio. You're. Oh, set. so Jackie's still paying for that. No, he's not. And also, the other bad thing is Jackie may be in your life a little bit. Because that's true. You know, yeah. Do you guys? You guys are social with each other. We date yeah. sometimes. <laughs> hey, Howard. Yeah. Have, have those guys ever double dated yet? Oh, that's weird. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird scene. Yeah, it is a weird scene. But they're hippies. 
You know. Right, you know. Yeah, you know what? If you're in my life, you, you have to accept Jackie Marling. Right. I don't know that I could be in your well, life. Well, I don't know. Yeah, some yeah. people might not be able to oh, get over hoping, that one. I was hoping, Howard. I can't accept Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Nancy, I was shocked that uh, you were willing to come on the dating game. And I was even more shocked when Jackie called me and asked me if I would be uh, open to it. I said, you don't mind guys trying to bang your ex-wife? He goes, no, I don't care. Well, I'm, I'm shocked as well. Yeah, but I'd be, uh, I'd be up for playing the game, and I, I'll, I'll put some guys through. Uh, I'll okay. What are you looking for? Question. So I'm going to I'm going to talk to these guys but I don't know what they look like? No, you don't learn that until we come in the studio. This would be a screening process right now. We are, you know, at least hear that the guy sounds somewhat interesting. All right. But but and then next week there'll be three guys, but I just have to hope that one of them Right, that you're attracted to, because the game is you're attracted to their personality, so Now you have to And that is true and that yeah. and that is the most important thing. Right. Okay. So you want to screen a few guys right now and tell me which three can play? Okay. Right. Now, no, I, I prepared questions. Is that the right way to go? Uh, yeah, you could ask them a few questions. You know, we'll just see if you get a general vibe. If you, if you feel like letting them play, then we'll really grill them when you come in here. Oh, okay. Okay. What are you wearing right now, by the way? Uh, T-shirt and pair of jeans. No bra, right? I have a bra on. Oh. Usually she doesn't wear a bra. Really? Yeah, I've got that memorized. <laughs> well, you know, for for television, I wear a bra. When I used to come by on my bike in my bike shorts and bike, that, yeah. that sexy bike pants I used to wear. Did you ever think about doing me, or was I completely out of line there? I I, I have a vivid imagination. Yeah. See, I told you. I have an active imagination. Did, did you ever fantasize about Howard? It's possible. See, I told you. <laughs> I wasn't making that up. Why didn't you? If all you it's had to do not, was put your hand on my balls, I would have been right there. I don't care about Jackie. I would have banged you. It's not an exclusive group, so. I would have done you. I know. You know, I would have. I, you know, you. I didn't know you were you so miserable. Tell me all the time. I didn't know you were so miserable in your marriage. I could have made you happy. <laughs> so when's the last time you and Jackie had sex? Was it during your marriage, or did you have try makeup sex even after you split? God, it was so long ago. I don't know. We probably went back and forth for a while. You banged any guys since, Jackie? I would imagine so. Yeah, I was going out with one guy for a while. Oh, yeah? So when's the last time you ever got it? A long time ago? No. (laughs) Really? I tell you, Jackie might still have a job with me if you had done me. <laughs> you could never have up, fired her. I might have put up with some more. But yeah, I would have felt really guilty getting rid of him. Why do I have a raise? What's this raise? Jackie, for? there's something extra in your envelope this week. <laughs> Why? Hey, I got a Mercedes in the driveway. What? What? What's that for? Because Nancy fucked my brains out. Okay. <laughs> oh, keep going. <laughs> I always figured Nancy would be great in bed, like wild. Like oh, open up I think her, she's a wild child. We'll yes. open it all up for a man. Probably does it all. All avenues are open for some wild times. That's my imagination speaking, Nancy. I have no information about what you're actually like in bed. You know. It could be. Do you open up? <laughs> it could be. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how, can I ask, or is it rude to ask how old you are now? That's rude to ask. It is. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, let's go to some guys here and see if anybody wants to potentially bang Jackie's ex-wife. I'm sure they're lining up. The phones must be jammed. I don't. I don't hear the phones ringing. <laughs> no, they're ringing. <laughs> do you Do you think you made the biggest mistake of your life leaving Jackie now that he has Jackie's Joke Hunt, <laughs> his own show here on Sirius? <laughs> no, I think we we went down a good path. No, with Jackie. Yeah, the right path. You were fed up with him. So was I. It seems like everybody got fed up at the same time. Yeah, we, you know, we should have talked. <laughs> you were fed up. I was fed up. It, yeah. <laughs> it did all happen right around the same time. And real quick, time. would you ever date Kenneth Keith Callenbach? Did you see the email he sent me? Yeah. No. What did he say? We'd be good, we'd be good together, me and him. Oh, jeez. So that's a no, right? I think it's a no. Okay. <laughs> all right, first guy up, Irish John. You want to date Nancy? Oh, absolutely, Howard. All right, John, real uh, quick, I, give us some qualifications, because we can't get into, like, 900 things here. You know, Nancy's oh. got to make sort of a snap decision. 
Why should she date you? Uh, I have a great career in the construction field. I sell and rent construction equipment. Uh, my equipment's currently at the World Trade Center. We have equipment now at the Deutsche Bank. How much are you worth, would you say? Uh, I'd say about three hundred grand yeah, overall. So that's not bad. That's good money. No, and I mean... Um, you know, my earning potential is there, too. I just started with a new company, New York Equipment Sales. It's an up-and-coming company, and uh, I'm really climbing the ladder. And you drink? Uh, every once in a while, maybe once a week or twice a month, I'd say. That's a big thing with Nancy. Nancy, you're not uh, yeah, you completely to opposed to drinking. No, you need to drink. Oh, okay. oh, all right, good. It's more like if I go to a Yankee game or um, I'm going to see Genesis soon. You ever and, been married? Uh, no, a couple of beers there. No, I've never been married. been engaged. How old are you? I'm 38. I could Do vouch you have for an John. age range, you know Nancy? Him? I know Irish John. I could vouch for him. He's a really good guy, actually. Good looking uh, guy? What's his uh, name? Not bad. Irish John. John. Irish John. We call him Irish John. Uh, but um, he, hey, here's the key. How big is your cock, John? <laughs> uh, actually, average. A little, little better than average. All right. Yeah, He's a very, you know, uh, pro professional... Um, uh, responsible guy, and uh, now John, is that three hundred? That's a character reference, Nancy, from a heroin years. Is that three hundred grand <laughs> net, John? Uh, that includes property I own, um, you know, vehicles, everything. If, if oh, that's your worth. Up. Okay. What are you looking at in cash? Uh, probably four dollars. These are, these are no, not my no, more than, more than that. I'd rather not get into that, but you know, Nancy, I'm helping you. Out. You know that's important. Yeah, we'll ask for you, Nancy. There, come on. Yeah. I mean, right. Okay. You know yeah, it's important. Triple figures. Now, what would uh, Nancy need to know? How big is uh... how big is his penis? <laughs> that's all she needs to know. Well, you're you're a Yankee fan, absolutely. Yeah, that's important to Nancy. That she's way into the Yankees. Oh, is she really? Is she? No hey, Artie, maybe you want to date her, Artie, Artie. I think you should bang Nancy. <laughs> well, first of all, she likes me. a funny guy. How to go from dating to banging? I mean, that's well, disrespectful. I well, you're cutting it on John's Nancy, finger. Nancy, don't hold out with the banging thing. I mean, you know, if a guy's halfway decent, give him Nancy's some. Nancy's not a holder-outer. All right, good. No, I mean, the, I'm not... has got to be totally decent. I yeah. also have uh, great Yankee seats. I feet, sit field all the time. Uh, actually, better than Artie's tickets. Yeah, he Irish sits, John, you should have told me that. He gets well, great you seats. Have a, you have season tickets. Yes. I, well, a friend of mine owns a restaurant in the Bronx, and uh, he gets me taken care of. He does all the catering for the Yankees up in Jay Pine Restaurant. Uh, yeah. that, that's, that interests me a lot. He gets great seats to every New York sporting event, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. he's everywhere. Now, he's a good guy, John, absolutely. I didn't know you were such so, a Yankee John, you're fan. A you're a regular caller to the show? Is that why you yeah, have a moniker? Yeah, pretty much. I've been calling for years. I've been a Howard Stan, uh, Stern fan for, you know, over 20 years. Um, yeah, basically, Angry Black gave me my name. <laughs> Angry Black gave you your name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he named himself and then he named and, Irish John. Yeah. And what do you look like, John? Um, 6'1", about 210, 215 pounds, uh, blue eyes, brown hair. Uh, you know, I'd say average, maybe a little better. He's not a whack pack. Yeah. Whoever, he's not a whack pack guy. He hangs out with the whack pack, though. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd give him an endorsement. We all, we all really like John. Well, he's Jackie like, hangs out with the whack pack. <laughs> That's but, true. He's not, he's not a nutty guy, Nancy, like the whack pack guys. Okay. Well, what do you think? Guy. You want to let him play? Um, okay. All right. You're in, Irish, John. All right, great. Thanks, Howard. Thank so you. She, uh, she says she's interested in your personality. Me, I find you dull, but <laughs> uh, what do I know? <laughs> All right, thank you, Irish, John. All right, Howard. Bye. All right, let's go to Paulie, who says he wants to date Nancy very badly. Paulie. Who's I mean, Paulie? I can't pick the first three guys, right? Or, or no, do you, you want, can, me, to, you, you want you, me to make snap decisions? Well, so. you, you listen. If you hear something that inspires you, and don't feel funny about saying yeah, no. Yeah, you don't have to accept everybody. If Irish, John, for some reason, turned okay. you off, uh, you know... You 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 give me the word, baby. I'm I'm on your team. Can I can I like speak with these gentlemen and then come back and say I'll take you know number three, number one, and number. No, I mean I, I mean come no, on. Now see that that's almost well, playing the game. I don't have a month here. Oh uh, 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 okay. All so right. Let, the, one of these three sh schmoes have to be good. Okay, I have to say no to somebody, though. Uh, okay, you, well, you maybe decide. Paulie's the man. John's, I, I know John would be a good player for the he game. He would be? Okay. Absolutely. All right, so okay. Artie feels you made a good choice. Paulie, you uh, Artie. Well, you're in Brooklyn, Paulie. What do you think about Nancy? What, well, tell me what's on your mind. Why did you call? Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, guys. Uh, this is uh, Paulie. I've been on the air before. Henry oh, Hill's Paulie. nemesis. Is this the guy, Henry Hill's nemesis? Okay. Yeah, I know yes, Paulie. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's a good dude. He, uh, he stands he's, up to Henry Hill. He's a good guy. I like Paulie. Hey, Paulie, what, 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 what do you got? You got a lot of money? How old are you? I'm 54 going on 35. You want an old guy, uh, Nancy? Well, I'm, I, don't consider me old because no one can ever guess my age. Everybody thinks I'm 45 years old. And, Paulie, I'm, you make I'm, a good look. I don't, I, I'm in I great shape. I have a wide age range. You know. I'm in great shape. I'm in good shape for the shape I'm in. 
And uh, Paulie, uh, are you yeah. in the mafia? Uh, no, I'm not, Howard. Okay. What kind of work are you really doing, legitimate work? I'm a graphic artist. I worked for a uh, major corporation for the past 13 years. Uh, unfortunately, I was just let go due to downsizing, but uh, that's no problem. I can hook up with uh, quite a few graphics companies in town. You make a good living. I make a good living. Yeah. When were you planning to go back to work? Well, I am. I am working at the at the present time. Oh. I'll tell I you, that's hot. Again. I Recent... was just let go uh, after 13 years in April. Why but, would you uh, be let go? Uh, downsizing. That's hot. I, I don't want Nancy... to mention... Nancy, that's hot. Recently unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I, I hate to make this a pattern. I know Paulie too. And you do. Yeah. Paulie's yeah. a guy that that women would like. Really? He's a yeah. You can tell he's like a good looking guy. Oh, and, uh, lots really? of time to have fun too. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't know about his finances at all, but I've hung with him a bunch of times, and he's a he's another good, classy, fun guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Paulie, you ever been married? Uh, yes, I've been married, but I have no children. Uh, you were married once. Twice. 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 Ooh. That's not good. What's going on? Well, I'm 54 years old, and, you know, if it didn't work the first time, I'm not going to say I'm never going to get married again. I did get married again, but uh, that didn't work out. But I'm still dear friends with my first wife, as, as Nancy can appreciate. That's a good sign. Are you, are you, you got a big schlong? <laughs> uh, I got a light switch. Oh, you're small. Oh. No, no. <laughs> I, I just use your vernacular. I see. You're an okay size. As long okay, as you can turn sorry. it on, you know? Because Nancy exactly. likes it thick more than long, I think, <laughs> if I remember <laughs> properly. Girth, girth better than length. Now, Paul, are you uncomfortable right. with the net worth question? The, the net worth question? Yeah, uh, what is your net worth? <laughs> Uh-oh. That doesn't sound me. good. Yeah, guy's been divorced. Does it really make a difference? Yes. yes. Not to me. To me, well, it does. Well, let me put it this way, Nancy. If, if we go out together... Hmm. We'll go to a nice place. We can. I'll cook you a nice dinner. We can go to a nice restaurant. We can catch a movie. We can go here, go there. You could afford that. Put it that way. We'd have a great time. If Who's we picking up the tab? Live, <laughs> right now, I live out of state, but I'm moving back to New York. Oh, where do you live? I live in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Oh. Well, when are you originally, gonna... originally from Brooklyn, New York. But where are you going? I've, I've been out here. My job moved me out here, and uh, as I said, I don't want to mention the big corporation that I worked for, but uh, let me put it this way. Everybody drink Pepsi Cola now. I see. Oh. <laughs> so you know, what kind of car you drive? I'm sorry, I can't do that. I, well, I don't drink soda, so... Uh, I'm what, 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 do I, I, what do you drive? I used to work. I drive a, a Honda Pilot. And, and when are you moving back? Because you don't want to date a guy from Cleveland. Well... I'm going to be moving back very soon, but uh, what difference does that make? I could and, uh, be in New York. I could be in New York later on this afternoon if if that was the case. I actually would like to date a guy from Cleveland. Oh, you would. There you go. <laughs> so you can Paulie play. Relationships don't uh, work pretty good. Yeah. Paul, yeah. Can Paulie play, Nance? What? Can Paulie play? Yeah, I like Paulie. Okay, she likes Great, you, Nancy. You're in, Paulie. All right, guys. Well, Paulie's playing. Look at this, Irish John and Paulie so far. I'll tell you one thing I know about Paulie. The guy's no pussy. Well, you don't know. He's on the phone when he's dealing with Henry Hell. No, I don't know. I met I him. I, I wouldn't I fuck the boy. Studio, I was in the studio in 2003 <laughs> when Henry didn't show up, remember? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Paulie, hold on. Thanks. I don't remember Paulie looking any particular way. You say he's good looking. Well, I mean, he's... Uh, the, the, That's what Artie's saying. When I saw him, he had a good looking broad with him, and I could tell, <laughs> you know, it might not be an odd thing for him. Put it that way. All right. Uh... Wood Yee's okay, on the I'll, phone. I'll, he wants you. Wood Yee? Wood Yee, hi. This is Shlomo. Oh, Shlomo. Oh, Shlomo, hi. I'm into the phone. I'm going to shove it up my ass and come. <laughs> <laughs> now, you want to date is, Nancy? Is this Wood Yee? Yes. Can we just shock the puss? Listen, you, you can't shock... can talk to him for a while, but, uh, but I'm going to say no. <laughs> she says no. Bear with me for a moment. Bear with him. He's <laughs> got some <laughs> sweet talk for you. down the toilet. What was that, Wood Yee? I mean, Shlomo? Can you hold on a moment? I just shit out a condom full of smuggled Cuban cigars. Oh. This will just take a second. Shlomo, you're a fan of Nancy. I know she was, listen, Nancy was a big part of the show for years, and uh, everyone loves her, is attracted to her, certainly. You see her pictures on her website. So. Hurry up, fuck what? I have to take a shit. All right, all right. Yeah, well, I don't think she's going to... I don't think this is the time you should have called. I don't think she's going to go out with... And play the piano I, at the same I time. I was forgetting that you're on satellite now and can say... Fuck. Yeah, it's a lot funnier. <laughs> Shlomo's great for satellites. Shlomo's... Man, I gotta take a shit. 
All right. Say your Go last. Say say one thing to Nancy that's romantic, and maybe it'll win her over. Go ahead. Cunt face. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's right, fuck face. Okay. All right. That is not winning her over. I can do that. Goodbye, would you? Nancy, you don't want him, right? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. It had nothing to do with. Shlomo, I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Artie, you know what you I'm all over the TV screen. <laughs> what do you say about... <laughs> what was that, Shlomo? Cut that bitch off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say about Woody? It's weird. Uh, once again, I know the the uh, guy, and I think he'd be great for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so now I'm going to say no to the first two guys. Uh, no, I did, you know. All right, all right. Thank you, Shlomo. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm going to shit in my drawers. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. That was Shlomo. Uh, Nancy, I wouldn't let you go out with him. No, thank you. All right, thank I'm going to randomly... There's, there's about a million guys on the phone here. Obviously, everybody wants you, but uh, let's see. I'll, I'll just pick... Let's, a, let's pick a guy who's not a regular caller into the show. Well, okay. A random stranger. All right, I'm going to say this. There's a guy on the phone from uh, Long Beach named Mike. There's a guy from Queens named Phil. And there's another Mike from Rockaway. Who do you want me to pick up on? Take a guess. This could be your love connection. We got anybody from Manhattan? Let's see. Anyone from Manhattan? Let's see. Here's a guy in the Bronx. Here's a guy from Wayne, New Jersey. Baltimore. Baltimore. Albany. Baltimore. Little Neck, hmm. New York. How about Little Neck, New York? That's close to the city. That's in Lonely Island, too, right? Right. Or in Queens. What's his name? Little Neck guy? Greg. Greg? Yeah, let's play with... Let's, 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 let's hear Greg. Okay, Greg. Yes. How are you, sir? Oh, fine. <laughs> I have Nancy up here on my screen here. I, I went to her old website. Attractive girl, right? Yeah, yeah, I like her. Good body. Yeah, no. definitely. <laughs> Jackie broke her in real good. I know that. Jackie, you know. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. He pretty much did. Yeah, he... yeah, but he didn't break me, so. He didn't break oh, okay. her, but he broke her in. That's good. <laughs> I know she's in good shape. And uh, But yeah, what about you? Good. Are you in good shape? I'm in excellent shape. I go to the gym five days a week. I'm into bodybuilding. Uh, I played guitar also for uh, oh. for 37 years. I, I was in Anthrax and Metallica in the 80s. So, <laughs> What were you from Metallica? You were in I, Anthrax and Metallica? Yeah, I played lead guitar in the early 80s in Anthrax and Metallica. Huh. Wow. And uh, now I'm 47, so I live in the middle neck and, and, and uh, became very uh, successful in real estate. I bought and sold foreclosures. Nancy's legs are spread already. Mm. <laughs> I can almost hear them opening. Yeah, I became yeah, a multi-billionaire in real estate. If she so. doesn't want you, I'll go out with you. <laughs> well. <laughs> so you played in Metallica when the guy from Megadeth was there or something? Yeah, when uh, D Dave Mustaine was in the band and when he left and, and uh, when they were in the music building in Queens. And it was in those days, early, early late 70s, early 80s, that time. Who do you look like? Um, I, you know, I hear Mel Gibson to uh, John Bon Jovi. I hear a little of everything in the face, you know. Um, uh, my hair's still a little, uh, a little on the long side. Nancy not, likes not that. Really. Uh, it's, it's not a mullet, is it? Uh, maybe a little bit, but oh. <laughs> I'm working on it. Man. Um, and a mullet? You got a mullet? Not really. No, not really. <clears throat> You're a good-looking dude. You make a good living. You're yeah. an accomplished musician. What's right. your marital status? Yeah, why are you not married? How come I, no well, I lived with somebody for seven years, but um, that's the closest that I've ever come. See, I've always been involved in music so much, and, uh, you know, uh, I really, uh, I, 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 that's my excuse. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. How old well did do to you again? 47, you say? Uh, 47, yeah. 47. But I, I look younger. Everybody thinks I'm in my 30s. So, uh, fifties to I'm new not, I'm not all wrinkled up and everything. Right, you're not a big mess. Stayed out of the no, sun. Not you're, at all. <laughs> you're not sitting at home with a prostate condition like some old bag. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, well, Nancy, what do you think based on just this small little information? Conversation, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on Greg. Greg, you sound lovely, but I, I don't want to pick the first three guys. Why wouldn't you pick him? He sounds like he's sounds good. right up your alley. You could sit there with those songs of yours. And play guitar yeah. together. Yeah. I don't know. You're making a mistake, yeah. If you want, you can put him on hold and she can talk to some of the other guys. Yeah, that's, what, that's, well, that's, no. what done, that's what I should have done from the beginning, but... Well, he could be here all day, then. How many fucking guys can you see? That guy's a good guy. Yeah, oh, uh, talk to kind of two more guys. All right, guys. Greg, you're out. Oh, Sorry. Sorry, Sorry, man. What turns you off, Nancy? I, I just probably the mullet. 
No, I was kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't have a mullet. What are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you said a bit of a mullet. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I, I, my hair's more like an actor sort of looking. It's uh, a little uh, long on the top, and it's—I uh, I can't really explain it, but it's—it's uh, uh, it's not, uh, it's not like that. This, no. is the, this is the first guy I liked. Were you there for Ride the Lightning, Kill 'Em All, Metal Up Your Ass? <laughs> What's that? What? Talica, Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning. Uh, I was I was in there in the, in the beginning. Oh uh, yeah, he didn't make any money with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, no. No, he made his money in real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys were sleeping on the floor in the music building, eating hot dogs, and they had no shout. They, they used to come to my house to think. Well, Greg, shower. you're out. I mean, Never mind. Hey, uh, Nancy, he's out, right? Can I? Can I? Can I just talk to another guy or? Two All right, talk to back? one more guy. All right, hold on. <clears throat> hold on, Greg. You're not completely All right. out. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sounds like you're almost out. All right, put him on hold. Thank you. Uh, guys, remind me that Greg's on line 15. All right, I'll, here, pick one other guy to screen. You ready? There's a guy named Jumbo from Wayne, <laughs> Wayne, New Jersey. Oh, here's a guy, okay, Dennis yeah. from Manhattan. You want to speak to him? Yeah, let's talk to Dennis. You live in Manhattan now? I didn't know uh, that. Mostly, yeah. Mostly. Okay. Oh, I didn't know. Dennis. Yeah, what's up, Howard? How you doing, man? You want to date right. Jackie's ex-wife? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of it. You know, there's a couple of things that she has to match. Well, how tall is she? You, no one ever brought that up. How tall is Nancy? She's a midget, no, I'm technically. You. <laughs> I know, but I just need that one height thing. I have a height thing, then I have. And to, what is the height uh, you like? Why are you short or tall? I'm five. What? Five eight? Five eight and a half? I'm, I'm five seven. Oh, okay, that'll work. And are you really Italian, Siriani? So uh -huh. is that? Oh, look at that. Very nice. I'm yeah. Italian and Polish, I am. Italian Irish for me. Italian. Oh, you're Italian Irish. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mostly Italian, actually Sicilian. So. I think she's had it with Irish. <laughs> she's had it with Irish, right. <laughs> Jackie's not yeah. Irish. Jackie wasn't Irish. Oh, he wasn't? I thought he was. Nope. Shows you how well I know him. English, French, and Dutch. Yeah, those poor people. Yeah. Nah, I'm the other way. I'm Drank more like an Irish. Yeah. You know I love yeah. Jackie. I'm just, I'm just teasing you about Jackie. And I love Jackie, too. Right. Uh, what do you think of this guy? Is he is he coming off bad? Um, let, me, let me hear a little bit All more right. about him. Hey, so, so what do you do for a living? I uh, own, I have to watch, I own a brand of cigars. I own a cigar brand. Do you smoke them? No, every so often, yeah, sure. But, I mean, it's not like cigarettes. You don't smoke them every day, every three minutes, you know. It's when, when you're out or, you know, it's a special occasion. How old a dude? 44. How come you're not married? I, I got to tell you, I've, I've been a musician for a long time. Band broke up in the 90s, and... Uh, I focus so hard on the cigars. It's hard to do, you know. So Can you make a lot of money in cigars? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not going to go into financials. Yes, I do. But I'm not going to go into financials. But you're a wealthy man. Uh, wealthy. Uh, so you're wealthy, Howard. I'm not wealthy compared to you. Nancy is wealthy. She owns mm -hmm. 17 homes. <laughs> 17 homes. Yeah, and they were all acquired, yeah, they were all acquired by hard work, huh, Nancy? Oh, Is that sarcastic? What? No, uh, well, just just throwing it out there. Ah, a little bitter, a little wow. bitter. Bitter? No bitter, no bitter. There's no wife, no kids. No, I, think no... I think they're talking about me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, she's plenty bitter. <laughs> Wasted her whole life. No, but, I, but I absolutely earned everything that I have. So I'm going to say I'm going to say no to Dennis. All right, I knew it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you, yeah. you, you dude, said the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah you, you blew yeah, it. Yeah, I don't dude. like that comment. Yeah, that, you, you're talking to a woman who can't you know, wait for the third date to say that. She, she ain't going to put up with that bullshit. Sounded like you might have been rich, though. So let Greg play, then. What did he do wrong? You want one okay, more? If, you, if we're running out of time, yes. Let's, let's, All right, you let's, want one more Greg guy? You want yeah, to, give her let one, me hear one, one more. One more. You know what? Can I just... Can, I totally didn't think of this until now. I absolutely cannot date somebody who smokes cigarettes. Okay. So if any of those guys smoke, I ha that should be the first question. I don't blame you. I'd be the same way. Yeah, I couldn't... Like, I wouldn't even... There's no way I, would, I could kiss somebody who... You want a guy oh. from Queens, Long Beach... Belleville, New Jersey, Orange County, or the Bronx? Uh, Queens. Okay. That's Phil. Phil. Hi, Phil. Hey, how are you? Phil, it'd be really Phil. cool after you have sex with Nancy. If it goes well, you, we will interview you to find out what it's like to bang Jackie's wife. <laughs> All right. That's nice. what well, I'm... I'll, let me just start off. I'm uh, 25, a young 25. I, uh... Live with my parents. Oh, so. great. 
<laughs> Jackie, I'm about uh, my net my net worth is uh, well, I own my own real estate appraisal business. I don't know if that counts. I'm just uh, working on. I'll date Robin too, though. I mean, if you wanted to do a triple, Nancy, I'm hanging up on him for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah, think I, this guy's I, a I no. Yeah, I don't think Nancy should date Can a guy. I had my the, fill. You don't want to go over <laughs> his house with his parents and have sex with him. Maybe with his dad. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think you could get, Howard, for the real estate appraisal business if he sold it? <laughs> business like that? Man of his caliber? He sounded like he was 60. Yeah. 25. I'm a young 25. I'm a young, a young 25. <laughs> you want to go back to Greg or you want one more shot? Got to give her what? Don't, whatever you, know, whatever, whatever you, see, you have time for. I got you know. the guy from Belleville. Belleville's a good town. I know Belleville. I would like yeah, to okay, see, let's hear from Belleville. I, I like, like to, the triplets of Belleville. So. I would like Nancy to find love, so. Because it would probably bother Jackie on some level. <laughs> Frank uh, in Belleville. Go ahead, Frank. Go ahead. Make your pitch to Nancy Siriani. Howard, I'm honored to talk to you, buddy. Hey, uh, okay, this couldn't happen at a better time. I just got out of the hospital. My wife had the worst accident ever. And uh, this, I, the time, in, and I'm going to be rich if she doesn't make it. So, <laughs> so your, wife is, your wife is dying. She hit so hard. I can't even recognize her. <laughs> so you could date Nancy as because long he's going to get the insurance money. Nancy's, Nancy's going to look great compared to her right now. Is she in the coma? I mean, well, she could and, be. and your wife is the one with the money. No, 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 no. I have insurance on her. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll be rich. And uh, I'll, I'll all kinds of when will you know? <laughs> how rich? Yeah, Nancy doesn't want to choose you. She wants to know how serious it is. Is your wife in a coma? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I you smoke. Make, make make there? Do you smoke? <laughs> no, no, I don't smoke. You don't smoke. All right. He can play. Nah. Nancy, what about this guy? <laughs> no, I don't think MySpace. So. I'm Howard, she can see me on MySpace. Take a look at me. So you're not kidding. Your wife's really in the hospital. Oh, she's terrible. I just left. How much money would uh, would you collect if she does? I got five hundred thousand uh, insurance policy on it. So wow! Hopefully, I'll know, I'll, I'll know by no Philly. Right, I got to try a different guy. I know she's not going to go for him. <laughs> no, yeah. Thanks for letting me on. Thanks right, for letting me thank on. Thank you. Right. Five hundred grand? That's not bad. I'd go for it. Mike in Avalon, New York. Go ahead. One more shot at Nancy. Otherwise, I'm putting Greg on. What's okay. going on, Howard? Hey, Mike. Go ahead in Avalon, New York. Where is that? Uh, South Shore of Long Island. You fly by it with your helicopter every time you go out to the Hamptons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're buzzing his house. I don't take a helicopter, but that's okay. Um, do you want do you want to date Nancy? Yeah, well, I'm in the middle of getting a divorce, so uh, i got to look forward to what's next. Uh, well, how long have you been out of this marriage? Uh, I'm still crawling out of it. Oh, so you're... Fresh <laughs> from your wounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, no, I don't know. You know, it's been over for quite some time, so yeah. we're just hammering out the legal part of it. Right. Got kids? Uh, yep, one daughter. You're a wealthy dude? Uh, Used I don't know. to be. You know, I work for a living. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do, Greg? Uh, what do you do? Uh, Mike. What's, Mike. I'm sorry, what's his name? Mike. 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 What do you do? What do you do, Mike? Uh, carpenter contractor. Well, that's good because Nancy likes to build recording studios <laughs> in like in like staging areas. That's right. She can repair things. That's I like right. I like carpenters. Yeah. See, we could set you up with yeah. something nice, Nancy. And uh, you're a good-looking dude. Um, I don't know. You know, I've never seen him throw up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a recommendation. Good answer. Can we try to stump you with a joke? <laughs> I've seen a few throw up. <laughs> I know. I know a lot of jokes. Would you want to? You you get in a divorce. You're a good looking dude. None of the girls throw up that you go out with. You got a big penis. Um, you know what? I, again, no complaints ever. I I don't. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't check out other guys' penises, so I have nothing to compare it to. Oh, I see. What happened to the marriage? Um, uh, you know what? People change, I suppose. Well, it was all her fault. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Uh, Nancy, what do you think of Mike? Would you rather have Mike or smoke, Greg? Do you smoke Mike? No, no, I don't smoke cigarettes. Pot? Uh, well, you know, occasionally. Yeah. Nancy, too, that's, I imagine. That's good. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what do you okay. mean? Mike or Greg? Mike or, Mike or Greg, that's what I have to come down to? Yeah. Um, or you can get rid of the... Irish John or one of the other guys and take Greg and this guy. Can I do that? I already said yes to That's Irish true. John. You could, you you could, could change could, your mind. Robin this says is American, you... Nancy. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Wow. Life is filled with heartbreaks. <laughs> okay. That, I think that's what I'd like to do. What would you like to do? Can I do that? Take Mike and Greg. Really? And... No Irish Who are you John? Who throwing out? Irish John? With the Yankee tickets? 
Oh, we are trying to see Yankee tickets. <laughs> yeah. And you, instead, you want oh, the mullet guy yeah. from Anthrax? <laughs> no. Yeah, but Greg's got a... I like... What Paul. about Paulie? And Paulie. Paulie, Paulie, Paulie I picked, right? Yeah. yeah. Paulie I want to keep. All right. But listen, Nancy, you talked to all those other guys and you were taking more phone calls, you know? Maybe Say Mike? that again? I said you were taking all those other, you talked to all those other people, and you decided to take more phone calls. So, you know, I don't want to badmouth any of those guys, but obviously you were still looking for a date. Well, you... Are you a Yankee fan, Mike? Uh, a baseball fan, but when the Yankees are playing the Mets, I got to root for the Mets. Sorry, Audie. <laughs> well, you, I ain't looking to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I mean, you seem like a nice guy. <laughs> Nance, I know it's rough, but you got to take a leap here. Yeah, I got to. Yeah, I could take a leap of faith. Yeah, Mike or Greg? Uh, Greg's over in Little Neck. He's the guy who was a professional musician. Now he's out of that, but uh, you know, he wants you. So does Mike. I have a feeling Greg never picked up a guitar. Yeah, I was going to ask him to play something. I wish I, I and I, plus I think Metallica's from like L.A., so I don't know what they're doing <laughs> in Queens. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I like Carpenters, so I'm going to go with Mike. All right, Mike, you're All in. Right. All right, right I like to hear that. All right, hold on, okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me tell the bad news to Greg. You think oh, Greg was sorry. full of crap? Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Let me hear you play guitar. Ah, uh, it's too early. Yeah, hey. yeah, it's too early for your guitar. Oh, there he goes. Wow. I think I can play this. <laughs> he is pretty good, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't have a mullet. I was joking, and I don't smoke. Well, you're gone. I do know oh, Anthrax. Uh, we're big Yankee fans. I read that somewhere. Thanks, though, Greg. Oh, you know who wanted to date you? Who? He didn't get in on time. Boy, Nancy's going to be heartbroken. Who? Who? Mystery man, say hi to Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Uh, who is <laughs> Who's that? High pitch. High pitch. Oh, hi, Pitch Eric. Yeah, did you know? Oh. You are amazing. You're beautiful. I would love to date you. I got a new oh. job. I'm in construction. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Eric. You missed the... Uh... She's already made her selections. I'm very oh, sorry. Man. Yeah, I know you don't smoke and you're a big Yankee fan. You would have fit the profile. I know, I'm a huge Yankee fan. Yeah, you're huge. You're like 500 pounds huge. <laughs> I do internet radio on Stern Syndicate Radio. And I don't know how I can walk along great. All right, thank you. Stern, Bye, Howard. Stern Syndicate Radio. <laughs> Stern Syndicate Radio. <laughs> well, Nance, I'm excited for you. And then I'm excited to see you when you come down here. Wear something sexy. I, I will. Wear a little dress. Show off your legs. Don't wear panties. Okay. No bra. Oh. <laughs> I'll wear something nice. Wear a skirt that, you know, almost shows everything. Shows your whole beaver. Yeah. And, so, okay, uh, so these guys, these guys will be. Uh, yes. They'll be on the air. Or they'll be on the phone. To, no, they like, will they'll be, be in, in the, the studio. studio. They will be in the studio. So and I'll get to I will meet, actually meet them. And I'll them put them. That day. I'll put them behind a screen so that you'll base it on personality, and then they'll walk out, just like the okay. dating game. Okay, I got you. And uh, I, if Paulie takes you to a steakhouse, don't sit too close to him. <laughs> Why? Oh, oh, he'll be with his back to the wall. Is that just, what you're no, well, you know, just don't sit too close to him at a steakhouse. There you go. Okay. All right, well, Nancy. We're going to be eating vegetarian anyway, so. Oh my God, I didn't know that. You're you're total vegetarian. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. Those are the angriest broads. Oh. <laughs> Nance. I look yep. forward to seeing you, my darling. I look forward to seeing you too, Howard. All thanks right. for uh, Nancy, thanks for putting me on. Sir, oh wait, there's a guy. Oh, this guy's a professional comedian. I think you've had it with those. Is it Jackie? Oh, Jackie it's Tracy. Was, uh, I like Jackie, funny. Jackie it's Tracy. Wasn't professional. It's Tracy Morgan. Hi, Tracy. You Tracy. Want to, oh, baby. You want? I hear you're you're single now. You want to date Nancy? I love me some welfare pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I like when a woman throw up on my dick. Really? I don't give a fuck. I'm nasty. What do you want to say to Nancy to win her over? When you hear them keys jiggling at the door, I want you standing way at the end of the hallway with your panties down and your butt cheeks like this. Wow. 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 All right, Tracy. I'm enjoying my sobriety. Are you enjoying your sobriety? <laughs> yeah. I like chore women. I like stretch marks. I like cellulite. I love all of that. Yeah, well, she doesn't have that. Fart in my motherfucking mouth. I don't give a fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a freak. I'm going to pass. You know when the pussy good. I mean, when you put your dick in and make that fart sound. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I stick talker. my tongue in a chick ass with the quickness. Yeah. I love when a woman gag. God damn. 
Glockle, glockle, glockle. Don't put it in my face, goddammit. Well, Tracy, I don't know if she's for you. She's a very refined woman. I deal with the fucking knife scars. Fucking the C-section scars. I can't deal with these pretty blonde bitches with fake titties. Well, you wouldn't have to deal with it. Uh, Nancy spoke all natural, yeah, all natural, all natural. I'm all telling natural. you, man, I'm a beast. I know. All right, thanks, <laughs> Trace. Oh. Trace, thanks. Well, I'm a professional drinker. All right. Keep your sense of humor. Right, you too. That's Tracy uh, Morgan calling in. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we we chose our we chose our guys already. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Nancy Siriani, formerly Martling, you will be offered to my audience. Three men have won the right to vie for your attention and hopefully end up in bed with oh, you. Oh, wouldn't it be great if we found Nancy's replacement? For yeah, that Jackie? would be good. So, so the date will will be. You guys will send us on a date. Sure. Whoever I pick, is it yeah. like chaperoned and stuff like that? Like, do you yeah. want it? Yeah, I think we better chaperone it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, for his sake. <laughs> she, this girl's an animal. <laughs> All right, real good, Nance. Yeah. I'll see you okay, then. Thanks. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Okay, Howard. There she is, Nancy bye, Sirianni. Bye. Martin. And by the way, see you Nancy, next week. Nancy can sing to you. See you next week. And she has a beautiful okay. voice. It'd be cool to bang Jackie's ex wife. If I was like single, I'd bang her. Just for and, the hell and, of it. And, and, and tell you tell about Jackie it. stories? Yeah. <laughs> Remember the time Jackie Remember the time Jackie was a real asshole <laughs> So I just got off the phone with Howard And um, apparently I picked Three gentlemen suitors Who I will uh, meet Next week um, I think I picked Greg Mike and Pauly um, So we'll, we'll all be in the studio Next week and I'll get to ask them Questions and choose my date. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It was fun. I haven't talked to Howard in a long time. So, thanks. Here she is, Lisa G. from the Howard 100 Newsroom. Lisa? Scott the Engineer appeared on the Miserable Men show Sunday night where he attempted to project his black cloud onto Howard's relationship with Beth. Responding to the comment that Howard and Beth never fight, Scott predicted that once the wedding takes place, the couple will be fighting like cats and dogs. <laughs> Fuck everyone. He also <laughs> talked about his life as a former swinger in the 70s. Wow. Oh, really? Wow. Fuck I everyone. can't imagine that, but that's Imagine what the lucky girls who got to swing <laughs> with Scott. Oh, you know, girls, I'm a swinger. I swing. Hello, when did, couples. <laughs> Scott, when did you swing in the 70s, you liar? You know, I love Scott, and, and I really think in the last, like, year, he he looks so incredibly depressed. Yeah, he's gotten sadder. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, like it's really like the cloud is growing. <laughs> Scott, when did you swing in the 70s? And by the way, it's an hour and 15 minutes. I got to take a break. I got to hear the swinging Yeah, but when now. did you swing in the 70s? Um... In the early seventies, when I, you know, yeah, and now when I was, you in, know what, in my how, how in my twenties. What do you mean you swung with who? Where? How did this happen? We, um, who's we? The person I was with. you okay. You, you had a, a partner, a, a partner. partner. That's okay, right. That's yeah. correct. We we were friends with another couple that we used to hang out with all the time. Yeah, and, and what, you're telling me that the, the other couple had to have you. We we swapped. You swap wives. Yeah. Oh, wives? Girls. 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 Not wives. Not wives. Ew. Yeah, girls. Oh. Yeah. Who would swap with you? <laughs> it was, I, I actually, I would swap. I'd probably say, you know what? Maybe my girl will appreciate me after she fucks this guy. Right, as weird yeah. as it may seem, it happened. I had hair back then, so I wasn't, I wasn't as gross as I am now. Oh. So. I didn't say that. <laughs> and that didn't, I guess that ruined the relationship? Or did it not? No. Eventually, I um, ruined it on my own. We, <laughs> eventually, we broke up, but um, it didn't ruin the, the relationship then. No, it was fine. Everything was cool. And you could we, look at this other couple. Did you continue to see them? Yeah, we ha we hung out with them. We would travel. We'd go away with them. We'd share a hotel room and with them. And how often would you? Oh, how creepy! I wasn't. It wasn't a lot. It was a few guy? times. Like you and the guy, good pals. Like, hey, man, your your girl's great. <laughs> High five each no, other. No, I mean pass. one one night we were hanging out and um, we did some weed. I, 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 <laughs> you I did weed? I did. I mean... <laughs> and after you blew your load, like after he blew his load in your girl, how soon after did you hop on your girl and, and you know, because you're all turned on? I don't on. think he blew his load in her, but... 
What um, do you mean? Where'd he blow it? Honor? Probably. Yeah. Full over face. And then, like, would you get turned on watching him? Bang no, we her? didn't. I don't watch. I but didn't did watch you, him. Did it turn you on when she would tell you what happened? Uh, we, we never spoke about it a lot. It was you just didn't like, talk about you it? You mean afterwards you never... No, it was like, you know, oh, we just said it was a lot of fun. I mean, we, we would... So, and so then, that like, night we... Would you, would you bang her in the same night? Like, she bang him? No, 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 him? no. Why not? No. We would, just didn't. I mean, we don't. We'd just go home and... Um, and not be with what? each other. Well, we... <laughs> and not talk about what happened. <laughs> That's a turn on. So... In other words... We, we all did it in the same room. Yeah, but the lights were out? Yeah, the lights were out. And you so could, you couldn't see him doing your wife? I'm I mean, pretty, your girlfriend. No, I mean... Probably your girlfriend said, I, listen, it's bad enough I got to see him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm him. Now I'm banging you. Listen, wife. listen. It was, it was all... I mean, it was... I didn't initiate it. I, I actually crashed, and then I, I was awakened and dragged into the shower with three, three other people. I like how you're using Ooh. your 70s vernacular. I crashed. I did. And then, All right, so, so they, you were asleep, and weed. they had a lot of fun, and then they dragged you No, they you didn't have the any shower? fun. They weren't doing anything. They were, just, you know, they, they woke me up, and they said, come with us, and we all went into the shower. You and showered they, with a dude. They did. Wow. That's a nice wow. That wasn't your revelation? You, you got watch a big the, cock. Watch the soap. <laughs> Free love. If that cock were to end in my hand by accident, there's nothing I could possibly do to stop it. No. <laughs> so no, in the shower. That didn't happen. In the shower, she was being washed down by the other dude, your and, uh, girl. That's correct. And you were washing down his girl. That's correct. Did he ever wash you? No. <laughs> a little lower. Oh. To the left. Uh, uh, Could you get my bowl? There you go. Let me bend over for you. Hold on a second. Massage my prostate. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, it ha things happen from there. That must be the grossest fucking orgy oh. ever. So you kissed uh, this other woman? I did. In front of your girl? They did. That was, yeah. And then you didn't like to have to turn on and start going, you know, oh man, he gave it to me. And then I was, you know, thinking, you know, this. And then he, then he grabbed my vagina. And, okay. You know, I mean, <laughs> she didn't give you any details? No. We no. never really went into details about and it. She it was didn't just, want to know about you it was and just the like, other girl? Did you have a good excuse time? Excuse me, darling. Don't you want to know about me? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I don't no. Care what you like, do. think about it. That was the ugly side of the Woodstock, like, sexual revolution. It wasn't all like the stones at Nell Coat right, in France. Right, right. It right. wasn't all Marianne Faithful. It was and Scott Mick the engineer and, and some equally hideous man. I was Mick Jagger. <laughs> it wasn't Tony Franciosa. <laughs> did she make a lot of noise with him? Like, did she? It wasn't make... all Michelle Phillips. <laughs> she made noise, and the girl I was with made noise. I mean, no. you know, you got her off. I did. What was the noise? Help! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Robin. Muffled screams. <laughs> she would say, "Stop raping me." Go back, Robin. Go back to your vegetables, will you? It wasn't Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. I was having more fun with people and vegetables. <laughs> right, right, right. Way to go, sounds, dude! Sounds you know? fantastic. It was, You're the man. It was. I'm not. I mean, it was fun. What can I tell you? That's it happened, and it's, it was fun. All right. I enjoyed it. Every all of us did. I all mean, because right. we did it a few. We didn't do it every day, or we did it a few times. We didn't do it all the time. And then That's you guys uh, was it like special? Like you go, hey, we're getting together with that couple. Wink, wink. No, wink, we were always wink. hanging out with that couple. Yeah. We were friends. I mean, the, so what the two girls mean? were best friends. Right. So did they ever get it on with each other? The two girls? No, no. They're close, but not. I don't no think they were into it. Hmm. But what? When would be the special night that you know? There hey, was no. Tonight. There was no special night. There was no was plans. Not a, it conflicted it was, with my bowling night. One <laughs> we would just be hanging out, and it would happen. It was, it was nothing made up or nothing that we, you know, set out to do. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a swinger. <laughs> no, I'm not a swinger, that's for sure. Uh, not anymore, but it, it, there was a point in my life. Uh, I was at Pluto's retreat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to go Pluto's to Pluto's retreat. <laughs> I wanted to go to Plato's retreat, but they rejected me. So they sent me with the dogs. <laughs> Guess who scored two tickets to the Ramones? <laughs> CBGB. <laughs> One of you has got to blow me though for that. <laughs> not you, sir. I don't know. I it was a lot of fun. I, I you know. I, I know it's not for everybody. It was different, and it was... Uh, the girls you know. back then used to call me Bald Pit. <laughs> <laughs> now they just call me Stu. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. I had no idea you were a swinger. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. Oh, anytime. Way to go, bro. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Now go beat off in your little room over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had to do now. Just memories. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Lisa G, is that what's That's happening? It. We'll see you all All right, day. thank you from yeah. the Howard 100 News team, and we'll be back right after these words. Scott. You were smiling yes. while he was doing So you were a real, a real live stud back in the day. Yeah, but you let I him I wasn't a stud, it. but uh, 
the hell's wrong? Well, you were swinging. You were doing some exciting, <laughs> sexy like, things. Yeah, we did some things. We did some nice things. It was fun. I had a lot of fun. Now, right now, you've got a completely different lifestyle. I do. You've really settled in. <laughs> I have. Do you ever think of having a throwback weekend and Absolutely getting back not. in there? No, no, no. That doesn't happen. Your current wife is not is not into that. I mean, I'm not into it either. I mean, you know, it's just something that happened when I was young, and uh, it doesn't happen now, and it won't. Why not? You don't have any desires to get in no, there. No, no. Why would I have desires to do that? No, you get a, you get some thick shag carpeting, you get was, a little orgy music going. And, I was and, young and single then. Why would I have fucking you know? Why would I want to do it now? Well, why does anyone try to do anything throwback? I didn't or, try. I didn't try to well, do it. It just happened. I mean, it, things you know. I'm just say maybe you want to have like a vintage weekend and get back in there just to see if you could. No, I, no, no, no. Things change and your 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 life changes and you move on and that's what happened then and it's just what I. I'm married now, and I'm happy. So it was a phase. A phase. Uh, good, good word. Good word there, Greg. Thanks it was a, lot. a phase. Thanks a lot. All right, you go ahead. You play on, player. Thank you. You play on. Nice. <laughs> hey, Dominic. Is it real that Nancy was on today? I mean, I'm listening, and I feel like it's another world. <laughs> She's going to be on dial a date. <laughs> I can't believe You're not going to... Please promise me you're not going to answer for right to me. <laughs> I can't promise that. I, I'm not promising that's, anything. That's the first request. <laughs> that's right. Pretty wild, huh? Is it? A, I mean, it's like not even real, the whole thing. What do you think is more unreal? Nancy doing dial-a-date or Scott the Engineer being a swinger in the <laughs> 70s? <laughs> Number two. That's why I'm glad I missed the swinging period. I'm a swinger. You know, you know, what, you know what's great that about that? That fun. You know, when you think of swing, swingers... In our mind, we like to think of like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie right, with yeah. maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, another hot couple or something. But the reality is, because when I used to watch Phil Donahue and Oprah oh. and they'd have swingers on, the reality is it's Scott the Engineer. Yeah, they were like heinous people. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I know I'm heinous, but it's time to swing. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the reality of swinging. Well, this weekend you had shows that were on. I couldn't go away from the radio. There were things from the past, like when Scott was going to have anal sex with. <laughs> oh, oh, God. That Lane, was one of the greatest shows. Memory Lane was particularly great. I loved uh, the the Woodie uh, indecent proposal movie. Do you remember that one, Fred? Yes, I do. Yeah, that one of his best. One of the best. I'm upset that I didn't hear what Dominic just said because I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> that oh that my was a God. great show. <laughs> How it says to how he wants to know. Scott, did you discuss it with his son? <laughs> he said, Yes, we had a long talk about it. Oh. He understood. <laughs> <laughs> how did you understand, understand that? <laughs> I, you know, I think of my own dad. Imagine he came home from work one day and said, look, I have an opportunity to make $250,000. I'm going to have anal sex with a man. That's one time where, <laughs> like, I would just jump out a window and hang myself. After we decided that you it was both. just going to be Scott's head poking out of two curtains <laughs> and him just getting fucked and, and just thinking of Scott's head just thrusting forward and that's all you saw. Me and me and Stutter and John shared a cab to to a certain place we both had to go, and it's the only time I shared a ten minute cab ride with someone I knew where we didn't yeah. speak because we were laughing about. It. <laughs> we never we, just, we couldn't get the vision like it had leaked from the show but, to lunch to a cab like we couldn't stop laughing. Over. Like I have such respect for my dad. Like I don't think my dad would have discussed it with me, but I imagine it would have been like you know how. It, I need to tell you something I'm going to do because you might hear about it at school. Yeah. I'm going on a radio show and having <laughs> anal sex with a porn star. Oh, my God. Well, that's so you can go you, to college. Oh. How do you approach your son? <laughs> what do you say? Uh, son, I need to sit down with you and have a conversation right now. I hope you can handle it in a mature fashion. Come here. Now, here's what daddy's going to be doing. Now, remind, remind yourself when I tell you this that they'll only be seeing my face. Remind you, I, I, we have a black cloud I have to somehow get rid of. You know, you, you want nice things and your mother wants nice things, and I have an opportunity to come into a windfall. This chain of poverty's got to be broken. You've been chosen. <laughs> We can add 300 square of, feet to the house. The, the chain of poverty must be broken in our family. <laughs> you think about it after taxes, the reality is like, he could have built a nice deck. <laughs> this, is a, this is a chance for a new start for our family and a new deck. Daddy, Daddy wants some copper gutters. <laughs> and Daddy, what are you going to do? Well, let me explain to you. Look at me, son. 
As you can see, this is my only chance. There isn't a whole lot of opportunity for someone who behaves like me and looks like me. <laughs> we'll see who's the embarrassing loser when you're cooking on a brand new Viking grill. I was also a swing in the, in the 70s. <laughs> uh, well, look, son, what I have to do is they're bringing in a black porn star with an enormous penis to put it in my ass for no less than 10 minutes How did that go while I'm on pay-per-view. But, of course, only my face will be seen as I take it in the air. A giant so you'll never witness. <laughs> also, this will take place in Giant Stadium. Ah, I imagine Dad, will many they? of the friends from school will be in the audience. How the fuck did, and the Goodyear blimp will fly by. How the fuck did, this, how did Scott even think about it? For two he went like, home and talked about it. He had a it. discussion with his family. It's <laughs> discussion. That's right. I discussed it with my family. Not everybody can be they a Trump. They all agree is what he came back and they said. They all agree. I should take it in the end. What a family. <laughs> yeah, no, his wife said, yeah. All right, I'm going to take an anonymous vote. I'm going to put out this hat, and I want you to write down the supposed to be three votes, one of them mine. In okay, each we'll one, one you can, the dog, too. Yes, meaning daddy should take it in the ass, and no means no. <laughs> now, of course, you and your mother will get free tickets to this event. <laughs> and, and we'll have ten uh, uh, additional. Son, maybe you want to bring your prom date? <laughs> Hey, Scott. Oh, his poor kid. His kid's a nice kid, Would your kid, band though. like to play while I get fucked in the ass? Oh. Daddy, Daddy, can I have a new bike? <laughs> oh, man. You're thinking small. I'm going to get a Honda Pilot. Yeah. That's after, a car. Do you realize for $250,000 after taxes, I'll clear a whole hundred thousand? <laughs> You You're talking life changing. We could we could get a built in pool. <laughs> <laughs> but when he comes the to the next day, he's very serious about it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where is he? Okay. You know what? I'm I'm jealous of Dominic for having heard that. The, the next day. <laughs> Yeah, he really was still, like, he actually had that discussion. That's, you that's know, priceless. it wasn't until uh, after the weekend. Yeah, he had they, a full weekend. That's right, the full weekend before he came back and said, we really thought it through. What would you give for a tape of that weekend discussion? <laughs> what would you give? Anything. <laughs> 250 grand. <laughs> I he could have got, all he had to do was tape the discussion. He could have got the money. <laughs> Scott, is it true you really <laughs> sat your family down for a family discussion when it came to taking it in the ass? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't even. It would have been the ultimate jackass move. Man. Exactly what happened. I, I how did you like, explain it to your son? <laughs> I mean, really, what do you say to your son? Like, how do you uh, approach I have that? Good news and bad news. No, really, what do you say in a serious way? I really do want to know. It must have been terribly uncomfortable. <laughs> was just... Go ahead. Was just... We'll be quiet. <laughs> We think about doing this embarrassing, uh, you know, we need the money, but I was thinking about doing this embarrassing. What, let me hear this explanation. We always need the money. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about doing this embarrassing. I don't think he was in the room. I don't think it was just me and my wife. You know. So you lied. Well, you said everybody had done Well, you definitely said you went and had a discussion with your son about it, because that's very clear on the tape. Shit, those tapes, they come back and haunt you. Someone <laughs> had a discussion <laughs> with your kid. The How best do you thing bring is it up? Scott has to fix these tapes so they're ready for broadcast. <laughs> yeah. Make sure what that part's you clear. Son? I mean, uh, how did he give you the blessing? That I don't it... know. I, you know what? I just. I think I just put it out of my head after that. I don't remember. No. I really don't remember. No. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, no. Trying to think, I'm trying to think what went down exactly. And but I just, uh, at some point, know, it was... Well, it was brought uncomfortable. Up to, I was brought up to... Well, they knew about it because my wife heard the show, obviously. Right. So she and told your son. She might. Uh, yeah, I, you know. That's good. The, <laughs> Scotty Jr., any questions? Yeah. When Daddy comes... voted yes twice. <laughs> when Daddy comes home, I just want you to yeah. vote yes. I, just say yes. I we found a way to send you to college. You know? <laughs> your father's no provider. But how did it all play up? Like, so Casey was talking about it, and then... All right, here, here's the And deal. then Scott, yeah. actually, you just yelled out, look, no, I would get fucked in the ass. No. Now, and I remember, it was like, Casey was calling these whack packers with ideas. Right. Would you do this for this money? Would right. You, so would you do, <laughs> would you do anal for 100000 Right. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'd do that. And Casey goes, yeah? You know, Casey. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, he, could I tell Howard? I go, yeah, go ahead. What the fuck? Yeah. 
So that's that's how it oh. happened. So we, we we weren't even on the air. It we were started just, at 100 G's. Yeah, it did. You know what it was? When, when I said we were going to do it in Giant Stadium on pay per view, right. he put then it up to 250. Then he put the price up. That's right. Because yeah. I knew I could I'd generate the money. See, I wanted to be a share partner. I mean, you realize Giant Stadium would have been sold out. Yo, right. come on. That's I why the 250 figure was way low for Giant Stadium. Well, you could have had merchandise. <laughs> You're an asshole. You should have charged a million. Yes, hey, go ahead. You know what I wanted to ask? I remember you know, that Scott went home and talked to his family about it. And then I remember that the reason why Scott said no, one of the big reasons was. Because his son started getting harassed at school. Like, what exactly <laughs> happened? I think he came home one day and said, people are telling me all these stories about, you know. <laughs> Your daddy oh. being a queer. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, Dad's a like, queer. All right, that's enough. You know, that, we right, don't need well, this you know shit. What? A lot of the kids at school are jealous. <laughs> oh, wait, so your dad's going to be a star. <clears throat> your poor son actually went through one day of kids ribbing him about it. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, which I said, then I said, you know what? It's not worth it. I remember your sister called uh, to discuss the anal. Sex. Sister, yeah, didn't she? She called. She called you that weekend to discuss it with you. Yeah, some family members are yeah. called. Or oh something. yeah, oh yeah. yeah what what but, did she say? She said, "What are you out of your mind? You don't, really? you know, you, know, you, know, you don't need the money that much, do you?" But Scott, you're not against the act in principle. Like, forget about money. I'm get uh, yeah I'm against the. But act. he's a swinger. I mean, he probably no. I didn't do that. Shower with Wait it, a minute. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, but you took a shower with a guy. Yeah. So what? Um, you know. So I didn't. I didn't um, touch him. No. Let's go back. Let's revisit this. Five hundred grand right now. Your son's old. No, enough. I'm done with that. I don't need that stuff. You don't want it in your No, 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 no. Right. Two million no. bucks. Wait, Scott, five hundred grand? Seriously. Wait. Does everybody have a price? Like Richard would suck cock for a million dollars? Right. Right. So, so how much? I don't, I don't have a price for that. You, you did? did? You did? What uh, happened? It was I don't know. It was a moment of Two craziness. million dollars. Can, can we just all step back for a minute? You left here not happy about getting fucked in the ass, but you left here almost right. like with the money in pocket, right. you were up for it. It wasn't like you were temporarily well, insane. You, know, you were thinking the money. And sometimes you, were... you reconsider and you say, all right. right, that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I mean, I, after you think about it. See, but this and... actually took a night's sleep. But here's no, what no, happened. No, no, wait he, a minute. He didn't I mean, mind the doing the it. The money was like, you know, we need the, the money. The only thing was... he did was that, say, I need to go home and discuss it with my family. Right. That was his only reservation. Right. Right. And then they gave him the go-ahead, and he came back ready to this go. project is green. The two, the two people closest to him in life gave him the go-ahead to get <laughs> fucked in the ass in Giant Stadium on pay-per-view. How did you explain to your son what it even meant? You know what, the, Son, I know you're not going to be able to understand. It was that long ago, right? It was only you know like what, Dad? I brought it up to my guidance counselor, and he said, go ahead, get ass fucked. <laughs> You revisited another um, sexual part of your past today. Well, the uh, the anal insertion sexual? negotiation. Is that and sexual? The, it's very sexual. I don't know. I thought and it was more sexual. like. I thought it was more like. Oh, you like anal, huh? Uh, I when, have a friend that's interested in you, Joey Boots. When you're no, no. When you're involved, I like anal. Uh, when it's your anus. No, no, no. Um, that's more like torture rather than sex. Any regrets now? Now that's been you know five years or so. No, no, no. It's a funny bit. It worked well, and you know, it turned out that I decided that I was a sane person, not an insane person. Um, so I have no regrets. But what about the financial rewards? You could be in a in a whole different financial uh, stratosphere here, if you will. I could be, but um, I still have my sense of whatever, whatever it is I have uh, to uh, to hold on to. How about how about uh, oral sex? Would you consider that now? From who? No, no, blowing someone. <laughs> but Evan, Evan, put the camera on Evan. He doesn't want to be on TV. <laughs> now, that he, now that he chimed in with his fucking ideas. <laughs> He, no, has but, to, he has to be on TV. But seriously, you could have paid for you know a college to you know college tuition. You could have done some some yeah. big things with that money. I, I could have, but uh, but no regret. No, not at all. Now the the idea of oral may be interesting. Giving oral. No. <laughs> uh oh. Here we go again. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, I'm glad to see that your you know your your posterior is doing well, and uh, if you yeah. got a hot chick that wants to give me oral, that's fine with me. Other than that, we're not going there. Ooh, ooh! I just thought of a good little hybrid of this. But I'm married, bag. so I can't do that. What about a hot chick strapping on and going a little deep in you? A, a dildo going deep instead of a guy for cash, of course. Not happening. All right. <laughs> this this swinging this swinging stud is unwavering. Gone. All right, I'll let you get back. I'm sorry. A wedding thing. 
and like I get cold feet sometimes, and I just go, oh, "Fuck, what am I doing?" <laughs> feet. Yeah, yeah, it's just like you know, it's like, what are we doing? Get married. Put those feet fuck in the everyone. fire. Yeah, they fuck, <laughs> fuck everyone. <laughs> you know, fuck everyone. If it's a financial thing, like, you know, Beth and I could just, it, it was my idea, actually, to have, like, a, oh, if we were getting married to, like, like, Beth said, let's just go get, go off and get married somewhere. And I said, well, maybe you want to have a wedding. Like, maybe you want that mm. experience. So, and then she got into it. Now she's into it. Well, see, mm. you she, always uh, do this. She's going to buy a dress, the whole thing. Oh, wow. yeah, now forget it. You've started oh. something yeah, you, you can't you, you stop can't with stop. a woman. It's like no. a runaway train. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? I get horny and I come up with things. You know what I mean? I'm like, Beth knows that about me too. Like we'll be fucking and I'll go, oh, I just want to marry you in front of everyone and declare my love. And then I come and I'm like, right. what did I just what? say? What? You can't make any decisions <laughs> I when you're horny. I want to profess my love in front of all my friends. Oh. <laughs> I'm dropping loads. I mean, a chick could get me to... S- <laughs> a hot chick could get me to say I love the Mets before fucking her. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you've started a cycle now, Howard, that is not going to stop until you're at your it, son's Little League game. That's right. That's what I was going to say. He's going to be coaching. <laughs> hey, King of All Blacks, you're on Joe the Joe Paterno's going to be over personally <laughs> teaching the kid. Yo. Good morning, Good morning Howard. Quickly. I didn't know. I didn't quickly. I didn't know that Beth wasn't Jewish. I thought all of this time she was Jewish. No. Well, what difference does that make? First of she's all, who? Why do you care? She's a Polish Catholic. Yo, I did not. I just said a Drosky because you know I thought she was Jewish. No. You had a what? A Drosky. A Flosky. A Beth was a Strosky. Uh-huh. I just thought a ski. I thought she was Jewish. Uh-huh. No, ski oh, is Polish. Yo, so how are you gonna? I thought that you, I thought Jewish pe- um, guys had to marry Jewish women. <laughs> You're an asshole. You no, really thought I, that? You thought Jewish guys have to marry? Yeah, Jewish like women. there's a law and uh, you can't break you, it. You don't no, know. You don't. You, you mean in all your years of living, you've never met people who were of mixed marriage? Yeah, but they. Oh, I, I did. But it's like it's odd. Like it's like yo, oh, like you know, and they always had problems. You know, the, the other parents didn't like it or. You know, it's, it's, I don't know how this got by you, uh, King. The uh, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, Howard said he went to an Easter dinner. Yeah, but that's why he said it because it's odd. It's not. It's not regular. That's why he said it. But like, if he know, goes man. to an Easter dinner at Beth's house with her family, how could she be Jewish? Yo, that's. But I was listening to the radio just now, and you said she's into Jesus. I was like, what? Well, because yeah, her not, family's into. Like, she's not a big Jesus person, but her mom is super too. Jesus. I, her I mom is married to Jesus. Her mom goes to church every Sunday. Jesus. Does she do the Stations uh, of the Cross? Oh, she does it all. She's <laughs> super Christian. So what do your parents what do your parents say? My sister's married to a guy who's not Jewish. What? Oh, jeez. <laughs> King, what? catch up with everybody here. Just no, when you no. think the King of All Blacks might have something going on in his head, he proves himself to be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Smart. You see, no, my, my, you see, my parents don't give a shit about that. There was a time my parents did, and my oh, sister yeah? went through all that. My sister was engaged to a guy uh, originally, not, not her husband now, but was mm-hmm. engaged. And this dude wasn't Jewish. And my mom at that time was all about Jews. Mm. And oh, she see? was like... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This was me in high school listening to this. Here, yeah, sister, she's, she doesn't realize marriage is hard and to have one strike against you. There's a strike? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strike one! And for her, she doesn't understand not to be with a like Jewish man. And, and I used to hear this every day. And then my mom started fighting with my sister and, my, and the sisters. They actually fought about it? And this it? poor guy, oh. this guy, this guy I remember, Charlie. He went through like yelling and screaming with my parents and them freaking out and my mom freaking out on him. Wow. Then my sister and him, my sister met another dude at uh, Penn State. My sister went to Penn State. Uh huh. And so she broke up with the guy. But this new guy, Pete, my brother in law, he wasn't Jewish. He's a Jewish, but he had, he had a free ride. By then they were like completely worn they were out exhausted. from it. <laughs> And my sister, my sister always had this thing. She doesn't like Jewish guys. Yeah, she's she like anti-Semitic. A Jewish guy. No, she won't. She goes, I don't like them. I go, What, what are you, what anti-Semitic? Do you mean, don't like them. She doesn't like Jewish guys. What does that mean? I mean, for dating. I mean, she never meant. She may have n- never met a Jew she could like. I don't know. No, I should. Well, we should you, call her and ask her. <laughs> well, when you got divorced, did you date any Jewish girls? 
Uh, I don't think yeah. he checked religions. I don't, I'm sure I did. I'm sure you know there were a couple oh, in there. How's the pop in your head? Like you know what I'm saying? Like you like like you going out with that guy? He's he's pure white. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't it make you feel odd to go in the restaurant with him? Like you know? No. What I'm saying? Is, are you crazy? I mean, it, I mean, it just pops in your head. Like you know, I'm walking. You know, I'm. Come well, you on. never saw a white guy dating a black girl. Yes, but it looks odd. It Look, looks you're with odd. a Hispanic woman. I bet she looks white. No, she doesn't. She, she, she I can see this guy. She had good hair. Like you know, I wanted my kid. You know the whole deal. But, but the, but the. She's got good hair. Because he wanted the good hair. It's yeah. not about her. Do your kids have good hair? Yeah, my daughter. She, she got lucky. She got lucky. She got good hair. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> she came out of her vagina real nice and easy, like no stoppage. <laughs> <laughs> He's so crazy. You didn't want your kid to have kinky afro it hair? It would have stopped her no. coming out of the vagina. I think black kids with that those, those wicked afros are cool. I mean, I, I don't know. That, I, I love that curly hair. That. I love I that kink. That and she was looking at me like I was crazy. She, I was like, mommy, I want... You are I crazy. And, and, and let me ask you a question. That was so, the correct look for your mommy to have. You ever see these little black kids with the big, like, oh, like yes, curly froes? Those look so cool. I, I would have that now. I love, uh, oh, yeah. you know, no, 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 look no, like Oscar Gamble. Thing, the funniest thing is when you see, like, the little girl, like, like rich, rich and famous as Puff Daddy is. He had two girls by, uh, you know, by a black woman. So rich and famous as he is, he, those girls still don't have happy. What? Have what? Nappy they know it's still going to be not <laughs> Listen to him. <laughs> like he got, I think, in a perm. One years old. But can't those girls go get like uh, their hair ironed out if they want to have? Yeah, look at Michael no, 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 Jackson's no. white now. They you got, can do anything got, today. They got something called Just for Me. It's like a black kitty perm, and you could get it like after two years old. You could put it in their hair. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, what a mess! It comes in a pink box. Like it's real, like you got flowers on it, like Barney. <laughs> you enjoy being this dumb, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see that box. It, and it's a, it's a song that goes, it goes, just for me. <laughs> and it has the girl on the front box with her nappy on the back is straight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my people, my people. That is funny. But, you know, this is exactly why Africa looks like it is, because people occupy themselves with stupid shit like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so my father said years ago that I was famous. Like, cause my father's from Barbados. So he said years ago, they used, to, they used to, like, you know, black people used to marry white people so they could have good hair. So it wasn't, I'm not too far-fetched. You have bad hair? No, my hair's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's just nasty, but I used to have a jerry curl back in the day. I bet. <laughs> oh, do you have any pictures of you with a jerry curl? I got to see that. I do. I used to put the baby hair all on my forehead. I like it coming to America when the, the jerry curl family, right, the, the, the guys, curl family. they all sit on the couch and they leave that big stain on the back of the couch. Wow, that's the truest thing ever made in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother had a Porsche back in the day, and I used to take the top down and have my curl and just spray it. That's <laughs> the crazy thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to go. And then you know what's the worst thing, though? When it used to rain on it. Like, if it <laughs> rained, it would still look curly, but then if you go into an indoor function, it was hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I went to high school with black kids that they would do their hair in a way where if like if it rained for baseball or football practice, they couldn't go outside. <laughs> like like the coach would say, we can't go outside. They coach, had, I got Jerry oh, Carl. Well, they had to shit in their hair. I guess that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Fuck up your do. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Oh, then they invented something called snapback. And then you would go in, like when you go in the door, you go in the bathroom and put this little gel in and it would snap back. Snap back, okay. Yeah. yeah snap back. Hey, let me ask you something real quick. I know you, you, I know you're busy. But I was just thinking about your house in the Hamptons, man. It must be extraordinary. Oh, here we go. All right, it I got to go. I, you no, know what? You, you, get, you go all least, over the place. I'm not bringing you to my house. I'm not bringing you to my apartment. This guy always wants to get into my no, shit. I know. I was going to say, have him over to the house, please, no. and leave us alone. All right, I hung up on him. He's really, I mean... <laughs> It's fucking nuts, man. What kind of faucets you got at that apartment of yours, <laughs> yeah. he says to me? I got mowing. I go, you know what, King? I don't even know. I didn't even know that was a thing. 
You got to know what kind of faucets you have. I go, dude, I have no clue. Even in the new house that's never been brought, because I found out, I, I've been asked that particular question. Well, you have my to make house. those selections. Yeah. I made you the might selection. find out at that point. I don't retain that information. Do you keep it in your head? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I went to a place with a decorator, and we picked out some faucets and shit, but I don't know. I'm not going to sit there and memorize what kind of shit I got right. in how do you turn on your water? <laughs> With a faucet. <laughs> so, uh, Bobo wants to check in on wedding hey, stuff. Hey, yeah, Bobo. Hey, and then I got to get to the MTV Awards. I got a whole bunch of shit to get to, but we got a long show. Bobo, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. You have stated that, like, next year at your wedding, you want a small amount of guests. My question to you is just who will you eliminate from the show staff in order to meet your quota? He doesn't like, know what his quota is. Yeah, right. you know, Beth and I went through the list, and I said, right. you know, and we both agreed, like, we don't want Richard and Sal at the wedding. We don't want that kind of, like, I, you know, because Beth goes, well, we can't have your whole staff. I go, no, 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 no. I said, you know what? I really wouldn't mind. We both agreed we don't want Richard yeah. and Sal. I said, I love Richard and Sal. I do, but I don't want to go to that, as they call it, the second and third tier. Well, would Richard shower? Right. Probably you not. Know, I, and I don't really want to open my private life to them. Mm. You know, like, it, it's got to be some, you know, separateness. It's like I really just don't, Robin. I understand. You know, hey, Howard, it's me, like it's like it's like I don't really <laughs> see what I wanted to do. You see, and, and this is where Beth and I—I'm not sure we're on the same page. What I wanted to do is have like a small dinner party, right? And have um, and sort of like do it separate. Like have my family and Beth's family at one party, you know, and do that. And then my friends, uh, you know, and, and see, friends is a weird t thing. Like everyone here at work, I consider my friend in a sense. You know, right. I mean, yeah. these are, these are the people that I love and work with and all that. And I'll throw a party, just a party, to have everyone there. Mm -hmm. But for the wedding thing, it's just like a thing that I, you know, I love Beth and I, I want to do this, but it would be just nice. I said to Beth, it would just like Robin. See, this is going to run into trouble. Here I go. Right, but right, fuck right, it. Right but away. Robin, Fred, Artie, Gary. Sorry, Benj. I and mean, leave it at that. Yeah. Even Benji's not on the list. But Howard, if you had yeah. And I mean, because, because I really, actually, I mean, I don't even know that I want to have like a wedding. But, but if I'm going to do that, just a couple of people, and then I think I could get the list down to 25, 30 people. She thinks it's 80. Really? Ooh, 25 wow. or 30? Wow. That's 25. severe cutting. <laughs> she goes, what, you're not going to have your agent come? Right. I go, well, yeah, okay. So put Don on the list, Don and Maggie, and I go... You know, and I it, it mounts up very quickly because people bring guests. And so if you have 20 people, are you talking about the just the 20 people? Are you talking about that 20 people and their guests? No, I was talking 20 people. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put something out to you. If you had a we should have a, a lottery. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> There's 20 seats up for grabs. Exactly. Oh, people, would you know how much those would go for? If you would get a lottery ticket, if everyone would agree to that. <laughs> if you would agree to picking whoever, like, wins. <laughs> you know what we do? Do a lottery for, That'd like, so like what Sal and Richard call second tier. Uh, I'm one member of <laughs> Oh, that's that's great. That this way is, oh it gets you. Goodness. That's a perfect plan because then, you're paying attention to the second tier and you're right. agreeing to take one wait of them. A minute. And I mean, you could be, you could wind up very lucky or in mm -hmm. real trouble right. depending mm -hmm. on who you get. Well, right. Like I could end up with let's say mm, who would be the worst person to end up with? Sal? Sal could right. be the worst person, I suppose. I wouldn't mind J.D. Right. He's just a, you know, he's just an okay guy. He just shuts his mouth. J.D. He'll just sit in the corner and dream. Right. Yeah, he's like a statue. Right. You know, so... Hey, Howard, let me just put this out to you. Fred, Robin, and Gary, if you came down to that, let me just start out to you. Who would you eliminate if you had to cut one of those three? And being that Artie was in the personal thing, he couldn't, he couldn't get uh, out of it. Yeah, because Artie would be on heroin somewhere? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Sorry, <I love> the, <laughs> all right, Artie's strung out. Uh, he right. can't Let's assume uh, that. My only guest would be heroin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least once a weekend, right someone asks me now if you're on heroin, and oh, I go, yeah. and, and, and like Beth goes, well, Artie's heavy now, and, and when he's on heroin, he's thin. He's so handsome when he's on heroin. And I go, <laughs> oh, he's heroin chic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I go. <laughs> 
Beth thinks you're don't. really a handsome man. <laughs> like, like when you're thinking. You she should thinks, lose weight, Artie. Yeah, Art. Well, you know what I, I watch? I thought the, like Artie always thinks like he's just ugly if he's thin, so it doesn't matter. But right. Beth goes to me, no, Artie's really handsome. Like I, handsome. I watched Hour TV. That that thing I was telling you about with the John with the orange juice mm-hmm. and everything. I watched that episode, and I am so thin in it. Yeah. And it's like, uh, but you know, you should Are go you back handsome? and watch Do you that see because yourself as handsome. The first half of that is what I ate all weekend, and you guys are all saying, "Look, I, we don't know how you're this thin. You're going to get three to be three hundred pounds." <laughs> you're, you're saying that to me the whole time. It's such oh, an interesting no. look at it. I'm like, "Now nah, I'll be all right." And I jog and shit like that. I'll never. And Robin goes, "Now nah, you're going to get older. The activities are going to go down." And, <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, and, were I we mean, right? I mean, I look. I mean, you know, I guess I, no. I never see myself as handsome, no. But if somebody else does, yeah, thin down. That's their problem. Hey, look at this. Richard and Sal say they're either both going to the wedding or neither of them. They're sticking together. Ah, on that. they are yeah, uh, giving you the united front. All right, both of you are not going. She <laughs> <laughs> what a punishment. Who do you think? Who would you cut? Fred, Robin, or Gary, if you had to cut one? Uh, Fred and Gary. And I'd leave Robin in. Because that's just what I'd have to do. So you cut two of them. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel honored. <laughs> and then if I had to cut Fred or Gary, I'd cut Gary. That's a small wedding. So maybe I'll just have Fred and Robin at my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think, it's, I think it's perfectly fine to say to someone, unless you... If you have a real significant other, then you can get invited with a guest. But if you're single, why invite a single person with a guest? That's you know? true. Right. I agree with you there. Right. It's true. My biggest fear is Artie's going to bring one of his guests. His his uh, guests. <laughs> when Artie was coming to my the house, guests of honor. Artie was coming to my house, and he, he said something about he was bringing some girl. Uh huh. And I go, Oh no. So Beth goes, Is Artie bringing someone? I go, Yes, I believe so. <laughs> They're going to be at the house. <laughs> Then at the last minute, Artie says to me, I'm not bringing anyone. <laughs> and I went, oh, thank God. Then I said, let's get Ralph over to be like Artie's date, you know. Hey, you know. I was so glad when you said you weren't bringing anyone. Why? Because who knows? You could be a creep. Oh, you oh, never okay. know. You could have. Who knows? But I you think find could girls. be one of your who is. I think that uh, <laughs> you know? could be a paid girl. You yeah, like, you know. Oh. Hey, Artie, she walks in, you know. Where's Artie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right up there. Help yourself to anything in the fridge. You don't think oh, wait till I tell everyone. Do you mind if I take pictures? Uh, <laughs> the girl I took to the uh, to your engagement party, yeah. she, she had a great night. She was fine, but the one faux pas was he asked Howard for a... She wanted to ask Howard for a picture during the cocktail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I That's what care. I would think of. Artie says, I'm bringing a guest. But was she like, was very nice she, the rest of the night. She was fine. No, I don't care about that it's a little scary. It was Listen, just at the house, I would feel I awkward taking someone to your house. Right, I yeah. really would. No, you see, Artie's like the perfect. I swear, Artie's so fucking couth. <laughs> yeah, like he I makes mean, his I, bed. I think that he would uh, know to do that. Because even Beth's brother was like, what was Artie like as a house guest? They were waiting to hear horror stories. And, and Beth goes, he's the most courteous. He's the best guest we've ever had. He was sleeping. What do you mean his best guest? I was crying when he left. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't sleep 36 hours at Howard's house. Let me oh, tell you okay. something. Any man who... No, he slept probably a good 15. Really? I got to tell you something. <laughs> oh, man. Any man who sleeps 15 hours at my house makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Because I was worried Artie would wake up early and then have to t- entertain have him to for entertain. six hours. <laughs> the fucking guy's like a bear. He comes out, he, he eats, and he leaves. <laughs> best guest That's I ever exactly had. exactly what I did. Uh, when I woke up in like Nothing one troubles the, him. I woke up at oh. one in the afternoon. I opened my door like, this beautiful house. I'm like, where is everybody? <laughs> like, everyone's been up for hours. <laughs> I, know, I was ready for my They're nap. They're watching your door wondering if they should come right, in like, and do it. Everybody's well into their day. Hit you in the <laughs> chest. <laughs> I've been up since five in the morning. <laughs> you know, he emerges. But it, it's Sleeping perfect. beauty. Because I don't have to worry about him. <laughs> he doesn't eat, you know, he's, until he wakes up. So that's my one thing. My, my mother you inst- love to my, sleep. My mother instilled in me that. When you sleep somewhere, you got to make your bed. She, she didn't even care if I made Be my bed. Be a good guest. Right. Can you imagine? Thing. I went down and the bed was made. I do that oh when God. I'm at somebody's house. I was house. shocked. Yeah, but, you know, Artie. Well, Artie. I'm like, this fucking guy's a great guy. <laughs> oh, we tell everyone how great Artie is. Yeah, well, the, the food, it was worth it just mm. for the food. Mm. Yeah, I had a You'll make the bed for the food? Yeah. <laughs> we'll make bed for food. But this isn't yeah. food. This is food. This, this is, is like, real I food. fed him good. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, Howard, the first time you got it on with Beth in the Hamptons, was that at Dominic's house? Yeah. Really? In Dominic's bed. Yeah, that's a legendary story. And it still worked out. That's amazing. Yeah, oddly enough. (laughs) Because nothing works out for Dominic in that bed. (laughs) 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 At least not without the help of Viagra. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) 
Yeah, I, we banged in his bed and his kitchen. <laughs> wow. You, you used every surface in the yeah. house? The counters. <laughs> and you know he is so proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. He probably enshrined that room and yeah. doesn't use it anymore. Yeah. I mean, if you if you eat something off those marble tops, yeah. you're getting some ass on there. Uh, oh. Oh. I hope you sprayed that down. I think that'd call in people. Yeah, yeah. We were, you know, we were just like, you know, <laughs> with the first time in a frenzy, you're yeah. with someone and you're really into them. It's, right. You know, you know how it is. Dang like crazy. Yeah, we had a good time over there. If we could only stay like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, take it easy. <laughs> We Doesn't did it this it? morning, though, thank God. Because I always, like, if, as soon as I get, like, into, like, uh-oh, we're not having as much sex, I think, uh-oh, I shouldn't be getting married. Right. I get right. real nervous. Because then that's, because that's something right. you hear right. about marriage. You just stop right. having sex and... Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, right there. Right there, baby, right there. Fucking A, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God, it's real close. Who is she making love to? I love your fucking tongue. Is that a human? <laughs> or is that Sasquatch? <laughs> yeah, this is like one of those Sasquatch commercials. Fucking with Sasquatch. <laughs> That's the problem with porn. Guys are starting to like make a lot of noise. Yeah, but his noises aren't even like human. He sounds like... Obviously knows what he's doing. Has has no uh, capacity for language. Oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> I bet because of this show that guys are trying to develop catchphrases. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, the loads. Holy shit. Oh. 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 Fuck yeah. <laughs> I have to say, dropping loads is one of the stupidest catchphrases. Oh, come on. <laughs> I love that thing. Anyway, so that was that. All right, hey, thanks, Bubble. Okay, man. Right. So then, like, so we were just talking about, like, how to, you know, because after Doug's wedding, I was like, wow, this was really cool. It was just fun. We hung out at the house. It was nice. It was relaxed. You really got to, you It know, was like a weekend wedding. Yeah, like spending time with the people yeah, you care yeah. about, you know? And well, I want like, to tell you just real quick to go back to that, how conscious I am of that. The, the chick I was going to bring. Was a doctor? I, no, I said to myself, you know what, because... I put them through a test in my head, and she really didn't pass every one of them. Uh, <laughs> so I had my doubts. That's why, like, I'm aware of what you're talking about. Yeah, because Beth was like, oh, my God, who's already going to bring I go, I go, I said to Beth, I said, I couldn't tell him no. The chick, the chick, if she starts drinking. What did she fail at, like, the one that you wanted to bring? When she drinks, she gets a little nutty. Oh. Yeah. You know, so. It could have been fun. Yeah, I'm going nuts, baby! Probably not. <laughs> as long as you blindfolded her on the way there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't need that. It was fine. It was, Instead, I, we brought Ralph out to embarrass me. Right, exactly. Oh, God, that's true. Yeah. Well, he was as bad as any crazy chick. Well, evidently, you embarrassed him. Like. Yeah, Ralph is such a fuck-up. He went on the, he went on the uh, Superfan Roundtable to answer questions about the weekend and yeah. when he came out. And, you know, I told you, it was horribly embarrassing, like, when I got out of my car and we went to this concert that is so wonderful out there. And Ralph had to pee real bad and he just starts peeing right in front of everyone, yeah. like peeing in the, you know. And you gotta hear his whacked out explanations of things. It's just unbelievable. What, what page is that on, guys? I, I lost track. Maybe JD page. I don't know, there's so many pages, Rob. MTV page. MTV page, he made. That's on MTV, the Ralph thing is on MTV page? Okay. Yes, in yellow. Thank you. Okay, here is Ralph on Superfan Roundtable. Listen to this fucker. First of all, he's mad at Artie. Artie uh -huh. is you. I, I mean, I'm not going to uh. go through the whole story again of what happened with that weekend out at Ralph, because I figure our fans have heard it. Yeah. But uh, as you know, Artie lent him 300 bucks, and then Artie was concerned because he kind of hadn't heard anything about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, so listen to Ralph. So now here's Ralph's the deal. Angry. What did fucking Artie expect me to do okay, to here's get this? Th what, what is the problem with this $300? Here's what it was. I, did, is I didn't fucking ask him for this money, and what, how was I supposed to get it back to him immediately? Here's, here's what he said. I don't have said. a fucking pile of cash underneath my mattress. I mean, I'm not rich like him. I don't have hundreds, and I'm not a gambler and a drug addict. I don't keep, <laughs> pile, I don't keep piles of cash <laughs> in my ass. 
house. <laughs> this was his take on it. Was he gave it to you because he, can go fuck he wanted you to? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just giving you the know, recap. He's an asshole, and he come, you're asking. He tried to come up like he's just regular. <laughs> I'm just a regular guy from Hoboken. <laughs> yeah, right. He's a regular. So was Frank Sinatra, but then he became Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and then Artie thinks that I am not going to pay him back is ridiculous, or that I had no. I'm not paying him back now. By the way, fuck him. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, good. That's a good way to First get out of, all, of it. So you lose your bet. <laughs> yeah, right, Ralph. <laughs> First of all, Ralph might not have piles of money, but he had three hundred dollars on. He had the three hundred that already gave him. All I said was I didn't want it back immediately. I thought maybe it, it, I got the idea that he still had the money on him because he didn't spend it. So when my my driver got there to deliver his bag, I thought maybe he'd give him back the money. But you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Artie, you know, here you lent the guy three hundred bucks out of concern, and I know he didn't ask me for it. But you know, I, I it's I, not a you know. But right. also, he could have called you, and when when you spoke to him numerous times, said, "Hey, Art, by the way, I'll I get it. I, I'll get you the three hundred, right, right. and I'll." That was really up. nice of you. Thank right. you, and I'll get it back yeah, to you. Just right. acknowledge it. That's all. That's what Artie was saying. Like, wouldn't you say to someone, "Thanks for lending me yeah. three hundred bucks." Thanks, by the way. He, he, Listen, the I'm a little tight is, now, and right. I'll get you. But when I get back from California, I'll get sure. it. Sure. I haven't heard all these, but they're marked Ralph Mann at Artie. Let's see. He, he, the whole thing is that he called you from the chopper, said that he's going to send your bag over with the driver. Then he talked to you again after you got it. But there was no mention again about, like, hey, I'm going to get that money to you or thanks or well, anything like that. I, obviously, I am so going to. Well, why presented, would I not? Wait, wait, wait. If you gave me 50 bucks for whatever the reason, Mutt, would, would you not expect it back? Would you not expect that I would expect? Why would you give me money? I hear you. Well, what he said I mean, then he, is you were he, leaving he's for LA. Be, he's got, if he thinks I would do that, he would do that. He He's projecting what his fucking fucked up behavior <laughs> onto me. He also said that you had not paid him the last debt, even though it had been brought up on the air. I, I did. I paid him. I paid him the the bet, and so I we, paid him with interest too. So it was he's like two hundred dollars. Yeah, Lauren. he's lying. He's and a big. Also, he's a big fat liar. He brought up <laughs> that you never. It was very expensive to take a helicopter to right. the Hamptons. And Gary said thank you so many times, and you never said thank you. And that's a complete fucking lie, too. I, I know exactly where I, I said thank you to him twice. I said once to his at, at, uh, at Howard's house. I said once in the hell, actually three times. It was in Howard's house. It was in the helicopter, and it was when we were in the pool together. According to Artie, <sighs> you said thank you. After you made an off-color <laughs> joke to him that really insulted him, and he said that you could tell that he was insulted, and then you said thank you for the helicopter. What Just the, again, what was it? It was a you're going to have to read. It's some Artie, sort of Artie, fat Artie, joke Artie, that Artie, he Artie, Artie is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's Ralph. angry at Artie, and Artie is crazy. Ralph Hot. Mm. Want to hear one more or no? Ralph well, says, these are great. I love it. <laughs> Doctor. Ralph never said thank you or even offered to pay anything about the helicopter. What am I going to offer to pay? It's like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> hey Artie, let me give you five grand for that. You know, I, I said thank you. I mean, I don't know what else more I can do. Don't fucking invite me then. And, ahead, it's, my, and it's my fault that they they couldn't land the helicopter in one place because Artie weighs three hundred pounds and Gary weighs two hundred and fifty pounds. Maybe those guys weren't such fat fucks. He said that wasn't your fault. Helicopter. He said it wasn't your fault. No, it's indirectly Ralph called yes. it my fault. Don't fucking invite me. I said yes. Somebody invited me something and I said yes. So how is that my fault? Fuck them. It's, it's good to see the healing start. So in so anyway, I, did, ma I did mention that he said thank you. I said he said thank you. This is Ralph talking about the peeing at the Hamptons event. All right. Now, okay. like this, I got to hear. First of all, that was so fucking ridiculous because this Hamptons, big fucking Hamptons thing. We're in the fucking middle of the woods. There were trees. There, there was no red well, that's carpet. Gonna, it's in a woods. It's a beautiful setting. And there are people there who represent the concert who were all seeing him piss out, walking outside of my car. Just it was a press set, line. Uh, set up a tent in the woods doesn't crazy. mean you He's can really, pee I'm in it. I'm getting crazy out there. Yeah. First of all, it absolutely was a red carpet. Just because it's in the woods doesn't mean you can... They erect this enormous structure, beautiful stage, beautiful tents. The paparazzi's out there. If you look on wire images... You see pictures, trees and he thinks it's okay to pee. Yeah, just, just because it's not a structure that's there all the time yeah. doesn't mean it's not classy and beautiful. Even if you had a campfire, you make your latrine away from the campfire. All right, keep listening to this. Oh, but it every is. single... The every most concert. natural thing in the world is to go piss at the tr uh, on a tree. Unlike <laughs> Howard, who pisses into a limo and then throws it all over the side of Ronnie's car. You know what? That's bizarre. This That's is like a, Howard Hughes behavior. This is a good point because not only did he piss in the bottle and dump it out, but yeah. later the same weekend, he said him and Beth went and pissed on somebody's lawn later the same weekend yeah, so at I, a different party. And let me tell you, so we get we go for this car ride and God knows how long it's going to take. I have to go to the bathroom.
bathroom. I have, it was like a the half- point is, when I pissed on a lawn, there was no bathroom. Right. Puffy was wouldn't let me a, use the bathroom. Was there a Klieg light and a guy the, with a microphone? The fact of the matter, I went in a woods where no one was, and it wasn't at an event with a red carpet. Howard, I, and, and, and the point is that, that uh, he, he left the house and could have peed, and there was a toilet no more than 30 feet away from him. And you got to make something really clear. There's a red carpet that you walk up, okay? Because right. it's got to be really clear so people get the image. Probably about 20 feet to the left of the carpet that every person that walks on. Paul McCartney walks that red carpet. Billy Joel walks that red carpet. Right. Ralph is, you see him in the woods. Yeah, you the, mean, guy, the guy, how did the security guy see him and point him out if he was being, you know. So discreet. Right. right. Yeah. The security guy came up to me and said, your friend over there is pissing, you know. Right. And if it's so natural, if it's so natural, yeah. why, there were 2,000 people at that concert. Why was he the only one in the woods if it's so natural? Right. I was like, t- said to the driver, I'm like, God, could you just stop and let me pee? I had to piss in the worst way. And then we got out and I peed. I went in the woods. I- we- there was a toilet right there. Went Hold on that. I've been to concert. You piss next to the car. That's yeah. fine. It oh. all goes back to Howard. Like what you do when you pee, they're uh, like, that's a Howard Stern yeah, guy you, you, you know what? So Howard Stern should have stopped the limo when I said I had to pee 20 <laughs> oh, times. Oh, we Why should stop the limo. Why are you involved with him? I don't know. I'm done. <laughs> he's really so, un- he's such an ingrate. It yeah, gets he better. He, oh, he, he, wait, 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 wait. Goodness. Listen to this. Wait, there's more. He has a comment that's even out of there for Ralph. You should, I got to give it to him here. <laughs> you should have stopped the limo that you provided that he would be, he'd be running behind a bus if it weren't for you. He wouldn't be anywhere. Oh, no, the Ralph. Why didn't <laughs> well, stop I gotta pee. Good. Since when did fucking Howard become like, like this, like you know, I don't know, uh, the, the president? I mean, you can't do anything bad because around you, because him. Because you're the guy I who mean, he's, he's in front like, of him. And st- listen, Ralph, we could, we had to stop taking him with me to, <clears throat> to appearances because he would fuck up. He would embarrass me. So I mean, he's gotta, he's gotta understand. It's not and that. And he's saying, when did you? I don't want. You always have been. But the fact of the matter is, if I want to do that kind of behavior, that's one thing. I'll accept it. That's my behavior. I don't need him doing the behavior. And but you know that's what's my point. And I, if, yeah. if it's going to have your name on it, it should be your behavior. Yeah, he doesn't understand it. It isn't Ralph peeing in the woods. It's the guy who got out of Howard Stern's limo peed on the on the red carpet. Mm-hmm. And, and Howard, this thing got to make clear. If Ralph wants to go to the Giant game and pee in the parking lot, that's fine. fine. But he is with you at an event that you're represented at. Right. That's what he doesn't understand. Yeah. And, and and I'm not the president, but at the same point, I don't want But wanna... he's almost acting as if, if you're not the president, you should put up with it. Right. Have a job. He, he's the guy. He, he's got the worst reputation in the world. He's been sued by the FCC. He's and clearly been cleaning himself himself up. up. He's yeah. got this Hamptons gig. Yeah. He's got friends. He's out to a fancy look. Yeah. If he took Somebody's you to Nobu, <laughs> he's like he's wait, reinventing wait. himself. Like it's Madonna. not just that. If he took you to Nobu, he would expect you to act like somebody I in do. Nobu no, would we'll act. You can't just say no, like I there's not. not a right time and listen, a wrong time for this kind of behavior. Listen, I'm joking, but seriously, it wasn't like I was like went out. I can take a piss. I, ha- I I wasn't even that drunk. I mean, I had a couple drinks before that. We've all I been had there. to piss so fucking bad like that. We've y- been expression there. We don't of give you. a shit. Only yeah. guys can understand this. Yeah. The worst piss you ever had to take. And that door opened, <laughs> and I jumped out the door, and I just ran. And, and, and I, for, to my credit, I went like a quarter of a mile and hid. A quarter mile? <laughs> well, maybe, was that maybe, right maybe, where maybe. the red carpet entrance was? You ran long, towards the entrance? Carpet. Red carpet. We're in the middle of fucking woods. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Wait, you got to hear because there's a, there's a comment that's going to come out there that's amazing. You got to hear this. During the show, mm. he was saying, like, I am sort of embarrassed by this. I'm not going to be able to bring Ralph to these type of events again. And what I wanted to ask you is, are you concerned that maybe you're wearing out your welcome there? No, you know what? There's two things I think about that. I mean, um, one, um, you have John you know, so, so, now. So, some, I have John Stamos now. No, so I'm kind of embarrassed to, to even work on the show sometimes. You know, people hear I work on the show and suddenly they have a weird attitude for you. They hear Howard Stern and they think you work with the devil. So, you know, so for him to judge me on that level is kind of weird. Something happened. Can you imagine oh, him making a serious? Can you imagine this? Yeah. This guy's whole life, his existence is this show. He's I want to know who else he's working for. He could leave. Everybody's so embarrassed. Every, if he's, oh, that is not working what for doors, you. If it's holding him, what back. doors have been closed for him because of you? Yeah, I, I mean, what door hasn't been opened because of me? Imagine his life without the show. He he's goes, embarrassed. He's embarrassed sometimes to work on the show. You may, he's embarrassed. This is a guy who was unconscious at the concert we went to and doesn't even remember it. <sighs> he's embarrassed. Couldn't he, find his way home. He was so out of it. Embarrassed. If it wasn't for the show, he'd have zero identity. <laughs> I got to ask you a question about Ralph. I tell you, I got just when you thought Ralph couldn't come from another angle, <laughs> I never thought he'd say that ever. 
<laughs> I'm embarrassed still, by I the think, show. I think he must still be drunk. Right. Is he still and drunk? Here. Who are you to judge me? <laughs> 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 to say? And you know what? Every time I hang out with him, it becomes that I'm an asshole. So who wants to hang out with him? Like he has to leave the house at 7.15 on the dot. It, like at 3 o'clock, he goes, we're leaving. Can you imagine this guy's a house? It's your gig. Thank God, oh, Artie. He's so bad. Thank God, Artie was there as a witness. Artie. Right. We're all standing there waiting for Ralph, and he's on the phone making plane reservations, right. something that doesn't take one minute. It's 7.15, and we want to leave, and I'm standing there. Yeah, and it, I've it, hired a car for the evening to take us, uh, and he... He thinks it's okay to be late. So he's imagine, amazing. he's late getting into the car, and then when he gets in the car, we're not getting somewhere quick enough because he has to pee. He has to pee, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the other thing. So instead, I said to him, why didn't you go to the bathroom? Instead of making phone calls. Right. Your life is, di you're, you're disorganized. You're disheveled. Does he ever say to you, has he ever said to you, Hey man, you know what? what I was out of line. I apologize. He doesn't. Say, I, I don't know that I've ever heard him say he was sorry no, for anything. Never. never. Listen. Been at seven fifteen, so it becomes you know if you don't you're not at the door at seven fifteen, you 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 got to be taken out and shot. There's no, it's not easy to hang out with him. So fuck it, who cares? I won't hang out with him then if he's so embarrassed. What time does Tamis want to go? He's not he's not he's not uh, punishing me, so don't hang out with me. Really? You know what oh, now geez. you and Sam are both being punished. Yeah, yeah. Sam Simon's being punished, <laughs> and I'm being punished. Wow. Ralph won't hang out with us. But you know what? You go to, if you go to somebody's house, <laughs> you sort of live by their set of rules. If you go to somebody's right. house, they eat at a certain time, and if you don't like that, and then don't. Go providing back. Providing you with right. wonderful amenities, just show up on time. Right. What arrogance must you have to make the whole group wait while you're making plane or, reservations for your trip to California? Yeah, or, to, or to even say, well, fuck him because you know what? I don't like the way he runs the house that I'm in for free and getting free food and a free right. limo and free tickets. Oh. <laughs> I swear. He's insane. Where is he? <laughs> He's sleeping. All right, think about that weekend. She's still on the other hand, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but see, you haven't upset yes, Stamos right. yet because he wasn't even home. I shouldn't be upset that he's running up and down the street asking people where I live. Right. I mean, that you have not lost your mind over how he tr acted that weekend is amazing. Go ahead, Brandon. Are you upset that Howard said that about you? That he feels like he can't no, take you No, seriously, place? seriously, I could, I can understand that. I mean, you don't want some guy like pissing all over the place and getting whacked out and all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you that that it really, I'm not taking responsibility, entire responsibility for that night because I was slip something. I know it because oh. I've, I've drank way more than that. I've smoked way more than that. I remember every minute of it. I, I've, I've never blacked out. But you know what, too? It's like I'm, you know, I'm definitely like it just. You know, He's the guy who's always getting slipped something. He's Mr. GHB. Everybody's yeah. trying to date rape him. I, I wrote Howard a note. I said, you know, I'm just sorry that that whole thing. I'm not sorry for anything that I did because I, I, I think that something happened something that was happened. out of my control. But I'm just, you know, it makes me look bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in all seriousness. But, but Ralph, did you know, but who is he to say? Like, <laughs> like, all of a sudden he's like Mr. Pristine. He's like, I don't want Ralph around me. He might pee or smoke some pot. He's like a grown up now. OK. Uh, yeah. I'm not a grown up. I live in. I live in. This is where. This is where I. I never ever did any of this stuff. And he knows that. But I've always been a grown up, and I'm a very responsible person. And and where I live, I respect my neighbors and the people Absolutely. I live around, and I don't fucking do shit like that. And certainly, if I'm gonna do stuff like that, I don't need him doing it. Yeah, let you right. start it if yeah. it's gonna happen. I mean, what, what, yeah, I'm a grown up. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm proud to be a grown up. You always have been. That's why you have the yeah. business that you have. Look at Howard. He's a grown up. That's because they know how to function Who in a grown up is world. He? Yeah. Yeah, but he knows that better than anybody. It's not like this was a surprise to him. I mean, he, he knows you. But it's personally. not his fault. He was slip something. That's right. It's always something. Well, see. but that's him admitting that maybe he was out of line there. I mean,. He was really obnoxious, you know, dancing and starting, yeah, yeah. starting shit with people. From the end of the Tom Petty show till, you know, like the next day. I mean, I don't. I vaguely remember, you know, calling Howard. I don't remember what I said. I'm dying to hear those voicemails. You haven't heard them yet. <laughs> I haven't heard. I haven't heard the show all week. Well, we'll tell you what they were about. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> Pipe down, mud. <Mike>. Um, <laughs> I ingested something along the way. I don't know what. It wasn't alcohol. I didn't even drink that much. And I ate that. I ate a ton of food like two hours before. First of all, he was drinking 
uh, before we even left. Right. And then he, he got there, and he and I saw he was p- piling on the drinks like a chaza when they have a free bar. If somebody slipped something to him, uh, I don't know when it would have happened. Where? Why would somebody be slipping him something? Because he's so hot, every guy wants to fuck him. Well, how did the guy <laughs> miss him after slipping him something? Maybe the guy didn't Maybe, miss him. Yeah, how do you know he missed him? <laughs> we don't know. There's, a, there's some time there's in there. Some, we, it's not accounted for. There's a lapse of time we don't know there's about. There's a few hours when he was driving up and down the street with some dude. Maybe Ralph was being fucked. And that guy has not come forward. <laughs> he did say to me, the alcohol out there was very bad. It made my asshole hurt. No. <laughs> I woke up the next morning. And Ralph was smoking weed at the concert, too. Right. What? Which, you know, I, I kind of asked him not to. So See, that's the unregulated stuff. A beer is a beer, a whiskey is whiskey, but pot, who knows what you get. Yeah, it could be laced right. with anything. I had a couple of drinks, I had a shot with John Hine. I don't know at what point something happened. Now, are you saying something as in you yes. don't want to say something, no, or no. something as if, in if, you don't know something? I was talking to Langford today. I said, if I did heroin, I would admit to it. I would say, yeah, I tried some heroin, and like Artie had that Subutex stuff, and... And I say, and he was saying to me early in the night. He goes, "Hey, he goes, you want to try? It? Maybe you want to try one of these. I, I'm, curi- I'm curious what it does to somebody." I was like, "Yeah, I'll try one of those later." So it was funny the next the next day when I was talking to him. I said to him, "I said, did I take one of your subutexes or something? I don't remember." And he, goes, he did not no. take one of my subutexes. Maybe, Maybe the cougar slipped some G in some your drink. I, I, I th- really think I got, s- I got some tongue. G or got something because I've drank in way much more drank than that. I smoked a little pot, I've but drank. it was my pot. <laughs> Were you taking oh, okay. drinks from fans or anything like that? I've drank in a few <laughs> drinks. Uh? I don't know. There's no Ralph fans. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When anyway, we got out of the, when we got out of the pool, you know, I had my subutex, and I said, you know what? Uh, the doctor told me that you know if you're if you're not used to the amount of heroin I was doing, these could get you high. And I was like, uh, you want to try oh, one? Oh my god! And then he was like, he was like, yeah, I don't care. And then I and then I went. I said, you know what? No, I can't. I said, God forbid you dropped out of a heart attack. Right. So I said, I I can't do that. And we were good. We were we were laughing about it. Right. And um, <laughs> the next day he mentioned on the phone. I was like, yeah, Ralph, you were so fucked up. I ran over and shoved the sub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it dissolved in the pool Sub-utex. like fizzy. Suppository. Yeah, he definitely did not take one of those. But I mean, Gary's right. The weed—you never know what's in weed. I don't know. Could be laced with some shit. There's one more clip I haven't heard. It's 31 seconds. Might as well listen to it as long yeah, as well. Yeah, he's full of. He's full of himself. Vim and vigor. Gary started that rap of Ralph has a sense of entitlement, which, which you, you Mike, you made a joke. He, and that's why he we really love didn't Ralph, start but, it. But uh, just shut up for a second, Mike, because <laughs> this pisses me off. Because. <laughs> Because I need my time. I am so grateful for anything that I get, whether it's you know somebody doing a favor for me, the smallest thing or the largest thing. I always say please. I always say thank you. I was brought up better than that. I'm not that person who thinks, oh well, hey, here's my where's my helicopter? Where's it? Because I hate people like that. And when I'm painted like that, that fucking pisses me off. <laughs> Gary, go ahead. Very simple. Just listen to the way he reacted to everyone who uh, put him up or tried to help him out for that weekend, and tell me if he doesn't seem like he's entitled to something. Right. I, I would just play every one of his clips to a judge. What about what about the clip where he goes, "Hey man, seven fifteen, I got to be out the door just because it's his rules." Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's not entitlement. That is entitlement. Hey man, I don't to care say, what the group wants. Um, you know what? You said let's leave at seven fifteen, but I have to make a couple of phone calls. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in there. I go, Ralph, hang up the phone. Like when I talk to a, a little kid, I go, Ralph. Hang up the phone. He goes, I, I'm on the phone here. You know, what's the big deal? I'll be with you in a minute, Don't man. Don't you see? It's 714. And that's, that, that's I go, not you're even... starting a phone call. That's not going to be one minute. Get and off the phone. We want to go now. Sometimes people think how it exaggerates. That's not even a little bit of an exaggeration. That's exactly what happened. And it was like, wait, I have to leave your house to get into your car to go to the concert. You got me thinking for yeah. <laughs> at your time? How yeah. dare you? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not entitlement. You're no fun. <laughs> You're a buzzkill. That's right. Yeah. You're not easy to hang around, you know. <laughs> and even like Artie's three hundred dollars, it was like, well, Artie gave it to me. Right? What, what, fuck no, him. No, no, no. Didn't you hear what he said? He didn't have time to get it back to Artie. Artie should assume that he understands that it's not a gift, and he should give it. He should give him time to get it back. To Ralph him. doesn't have a pile of cash. Well, a pile of cash is not three hundred dollars, right? Pile of cash. But he had your pile of cash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Ralph, can I get that forty-two grand? The Justin, only? you're on the air. Hey Howard, how you doing? Hey brother. Um, I was just thinking, you know, man, like, what's cool? What, how, you, you know, you, you guys, uh, you, you yell at Ralph and everything, and you know, he, uh, what's cool? I don't know if he gets it, man, because it's like his thing. It's his gimmick. No, he doesn't get it. 
Yeah, that's the thing. Like, he, he gets on the air and he thinks you guys are having a big time, a big joke with it. And then as soon as he, you know, get off the air and everything. Uh, I don't know what this guy's saying. I don't well, know either. Uh, y- 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 that that guy- <laughs> <laughs> You'll shoot yourself in the head listening to that guy. Yeah, I mean, what is his point? I think what, I don't know if he was trying to make this, but I think he thinks, like, everybody has an image maybe on the air, and his is that he's the prick, so he feeds into this almost. Like, yeah, hey, I'm the prick. It's, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, What, what I would do, you expect? <laughs> he's a good friend of mine, but boy, is he misguided. I gotta say. I, I'm shocked. I've ne- He's taken it to a new level with he has. this particular trip. Yeah. But is everybody else wrong? That's what he has to look at. Like, clearly, there's issues with Sam after he was there for yeah. a while. Yeah, like, wouldn't right. you think, hey, I've been Howard's friend for a really long time. I really... Effed up this time. I uh, effed up with maybe I should look at myself. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't happen. For no, that's not And to say there wasn't any red carpet, the what yeah, it was the woods, but they built something in the woods. That's what I said. That if was you a red put carpet. A tent up in the woods, you don't go into it and piss. Robin. Yes. Even for Ralph. Even for Ralph and his incredibly ungrateful nature, were his actions in the Hamptons, has he gone too far with that? It seems a little off the charts. I was really shocked by uh, Ralph's, the story of Ralph's escapades in the Hamptons this time around because it does show a lack of consideration of your host. It's one thing to be out on your own and do whatever you want to do, but when somebody's making a wonderful weekend for you and you step out of your car and you make a public display that other people can see and will comment on that's, you know, where news cameras are, etc. I just don't think that shows a great deal of um, consideration for people who are being good to you. Ralph's actions were pretty extreme even for Ralph. Um, Did he go too far? Probably, but it sounds like what's coming out of the story is that Ralph was drugged, and, um, you know, people like to hate Ralph, and they they like to not believe Ralph. I sort of believe him in this case. I don't know what he was drugged with, uh, but it just seems so far-fetched and so extreme and so insane that maybe something was up. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Ralph. I really don't. I mean, he's always been sort of out there when it comes to stuff like this. And I do think he has a sense of entitlement in the sense of like, hey, I'm going to do what I want to do. But yeah, these were like a little bit wacky. You know, he gets mad. Like, I think it's just funny that that night, which is all this is about, he got drunk and wasn't in control of what he was doing and we're all at fault. Everything that happens at fault, we talked about that weekend, it's all our fault. It's my fault, it's Howard's fault, it's Daugherty's fault, it's Rossi's fault. The only person whose fault it isn't is Ralph. No, I don't think Ralph's gone too far. I think, you know, this is what happens when you don't have a uh, direct conversation. You know, the guys tell one story on the air, then Ralph responds on another show without them around, and then, you know, they respond back when Ralph's not there. These guys need to meet face-to-face to work all this out. Ralph's, Ralph's just being Ralph. So you think this stems from a, a big miscommunication? I think this uh, stems from everyone being insane. And, uh, you know, you got, yeah, you got the guys on the air saying their side of the story without Ralph, so Ralph responds back, you know, hard. Or feel he has to push back even harder on a different show. You know, it's just a whole, it's a whole back and forth give and take. Every, you know, I, I don't know. No, I don't think Ralph's gone too far. I think you know Ralph will just, you know, every, every time he burns one of his Hollywood friends, he seems to end up at another Hollywood friend's house. So I think, all right. Ralph always takes everything too far. Uh, this this Hampton stunt this is just another example of how Ralph um, has this entitlement mentality where he thinks everything you know, um, for him should like, you know, the rules are different for him. Basically, it's like, you know, everybody else lives by one set of the rules and Ralph has to live by another one. And even as you can see, even he thinks Howard should live by Ralph's rules. It's like, so he, he really thinks everything is should be his way and as Ralph, you know, wants it or, you know. The fact that he's he was complaining that Howard wanted to leave at 7.15 when Howard was giving them a ride, Howard was, it was Howard's car, Dude, you got to be a little, a little considerate, you know. And and Ralph's just—he's not considerate of anybody else but him. You know, who am I to judge? I can only worry about one person, and that's me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And as long as I try and be a good person, as good as I can be, um, you know, I have enough issues to deal with myself. So uh, I can't worry about Ralph and his problems. 
other people. And if other people want to be friends with him or whatever, so. So you're taking the uh, judge not lest you be judged uh, approach here. Sure. But, but if that's what it, it means, yes. Even given Ralph's track record, his actions in the Hamptons were just too much. I mean, you just don't, not so much that it's Howard and, and it's a celebrity, it's the fact that it's your good friend. You don't treat friends like that. When friends try to do nice things for you, you don't go back and throw it in their face, you know, once you sober up and realize what you've done the night before. You kind of have to suck it up and say, hey, listen guys, I was wrong. And on top of that, if someone loans you money, regardless of their uh, celebrity status, you, you at least offer it back as a uh, as a sign of friendship. So, I mean, as, as good of a guy as Ralph is, sometimes he acts completely immature, and uh, this is just another example of that. You know what? I really think Ralph can never go too far. I mean, the fact that he said that, you know, he's embarrassed by the show tells you everything you need to know about Ralph, but him and Howard are tight, and I don't think he could ever go too far. So to answer your question, no, I don't. I think regarding Ralph, Howard is Dr. Frankenstein, and he created this monster in the first place. So, yes, Ralph definitely went over the line, but Howard has allowed this to happen over the past 10, 15 years, so you can't blame Ralph for it. Like, if you have a dog and it keeps pissing on the floor and you don't correct it, it's gonna keep pissing on the floor because it doesn't know any better. And with his most recent actions, do you think Howard will eventually cut him off because of it? Has he has he reached that point? No, I think that Howard, you know, Ralph manages to pick people who have a great deal of affection for him, and they sort of forgive him for some reason or other, and, and I think Howard is going to forgive him again. So this is just very cyclical. I think eventually, you know, Ralph could, you know, if he keeps escalating, because like I said, this was way beyond, you know, the normal Ralph thing, that if he keeps escalating to this point, he may be one of those guys who's trying to crash and burn, you know, you have people like that, life's too good, they've got to mess it up, and I don't know if Ralph is, is on that track, but he could do something that eventually gets him thrown out of the whole thing. Right, so he could be a self-destructive moocher. Yeah. All right. I hope that's not the case. I kind of do, but... Okay. <laughs> well, that's you. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Ralph. All right. You know, it's going to come back to, to Ralph um, pleading or, or stating his case that he was drugged or something was up. He's going to apologize and blame it on something that altered his mind. And Howard and Ralph will hug and make up, and they'll be on their merry way, and they'll be buddies again. And it, who knows? Maybe it will happen again. Could happen again down the road. I would, I would pretty much guarantee that there's another incident, another incident with Ralph. But that's what makes the show great, and that's what makes the uh, Ralph such a controversial, hated figure. Howard really does like him. I don't think I'll cut him off, but I think that, you know, you could certainly wear out a welcome. But Ra Ra Howard really likes Ralph, so to wear it out, he's got to push it, and he is pushing it. Howard's never going to cut Ralph off. He must have, like, pictures of him fucking a donkey or some shit like that. There's no way, if this was anybody else, Howard would be a lot more pissed and it would, it would be a bigger issue. For some reason, it's like Ralph, he's just like, oh, it's Ralph, ha 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 ha. You know, uh, he's still my buddy, he's still my friend, I'm gonna, you know, still be nice to him. Ralph can do it kind of whatever he wants. Uh, with anybody else, it would be like, uh, this would be like World War Three. It would be the biggest thing ever. You know, I, I don't know. I don't see Howard, I don't see Howard, you know, getting rid of Ralph anytime soon. Even based on Howard's reaction today, I, uh, I don't think this is a cutoff point for Ralph. There will never be a cutoff point for Ralph because there's something endearing about him that Howard sees. I mean, this has been going on for years and years and years. Ralph screws up, he deflects it, he deflects the problem instead of apologizing for it and owning up for it. And then, uh, in turn, he's right back in there getting all the free hookups and, uh, living sort of Howard's lifestyle, and then uh, he screws up again, and uh, no apology comes, so it's a cycle. If I was in Howard's position, and I don't know everyone's full positions or whatever, I, I don't think I would be as good as friends with Ralph as he is with him. With that being said, in his most recent actions, is he going to get cut off? Is this the, finally, is this it? Oh, I don't I, You know what? I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. This is a very, uh, it's, a, it's a long cycle. It's, it's life, you know? Such is life, c'est la vie. <laughs> que sera, sera.
Howard's never going to cut off Ralph, and I know that bothers a lot of people. More power to Ralph for having a comfortable relationship with Howard like that, but uh, I don't know what else Ralph could do to get on, to reach the point where Howard says, no more. And Ralph knows that, and I think that's part of why he acts the way he acts. Because he knows he can get away with it. That's right. He can get away with it, so why not? Howard is an enabler to Ralph's uh, ungratefulness. To a certain extent, yeah, he is. I mean, when uh, somebody acts a certain way, and if you're his employer and you're okay with it, then of course he enables them. No, it, it's not going to be the cutoff point because it is progressing to the point where it's going to like be something real, something really bad is going to happen. But I think like Ralph is kept around because he knows so much intimate shit about Howard and about the show that Howard will never actually get rid of him because he knows about like the girls that Howard hooked up with. He knows everything. So, worst case, Ralph could just like get pissed off and leave and he'll write a tell-all book. But knowing Ralph, he'll like write the first page and that book will never come out. So, nothing will happen. Fellas, look. <clears throat> you guys are two people who often um, vie for Howard's affection. This time, Ralph, you know, the, his most recent Hamptons weekend with Ralph. Do you think how, uh, I'm sorry, do you think Ralph has gone too far? I, I don't think so. I think what Ralph did was totally rational. If you're a guy and you have to piss and you have the choice of pissing your pants or pissing in the grass, you're going to piss in the grass. That's like, they're, they're just so high class that they don't like being around any poppers anymore. You know, it's like, oh, if you dare to pee in the outdoors, you shouldn't be around us. It's like everybody's got to pee outdoors once in a while. The bathrooms are probably a mile away. I don't blame Ralph. I would have done the same thing, but then again, that's why me and Sal never hang out with him because we're, we're low class. But what about his over-the-top, you know, ungrateful attitude towards Artie's generosity and Howard's generosity in general? Um, yeah, I mean, that gets a little annoying, but the generosity's all relative. 300 bucks to Arnie is like me taking change out of my ashtray in my car and giving it to a homeless person. That's not generous. I mean, take a look what uh, take a look what Arnie's making. He threw Ralph a couple of bucks. That was very kind of Arnie. I wouldn't say it's generous. Generous is, you know, going down to a cancer ward and, you know, making a donation for $10,000. That's a little bit more... That's a little bit more uh, relative to what Arnie's salary is. I have to agree with Richard here, and I agree with Ralph. I don't blame Ralph one bit. The guy fucking took a piss out of a car. You know what? I wish I, I wish that was the biggest problem in my life where I can get off, get out of a limo, hop in a helicopter back to a limo to a red carpet event in the Hamptons, and the only thing I got to bitch about is my buddy taking a piss. Give me a break. I was in Florida this fucking weekend with my son. We were on a tiny boat, a pontoon, six people. I asked the captain, where can I take a piss? He goes, you're looking at it. There was two ladies on the boat. My kid was there. I took my cock out, took a piss right there. And you know what? Nobody even flinched. And if those women would high-five me, they would. Because that's real life, you know? Uh, Ralph had an involuntary function happen to him where he had no other opportunity but to, uh, you know, relieve himself. So I don't blame Ralph one bit. I think 10 years ago, we would have went to this Hamptons event with the red carpet. We would have pissed on the carpet ourselves and had a blast about it, and it would have made for great radio. Howard seemed extremely taken aback, though, this time at, at Ralph's ungratefulness. Do you think that this will eventually lead to Ralph being cut off by Howard? I don't know. I mean, look, there's no disputing that Ralph is an arrogant, pompous asshole who definitely abuses people. So if there was ever a reason why Howard should cut off Ralph, he should have done it years ago. I mean, the, the guy's very, very manipulative. I don't trust him personally. 